Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Wednesday yeah. here in the big city. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, everybody. This is, of course, another edition of the Carton Show. That guy right there is David Jacoby. Oh, right, yeah. Still, we got right here the only Hall of Famer on this table, although I'm in the running for a couple of them. Oh, uh, there, you go. Go. there you is go. My main man, number 10, Mr. Timmy Hardaway yes, right sir. there. And the kaleidoscope today you see me. is the Super Bowl champion. <laughs> I am dizzy. What do you mean? And I'm getting a headache. <laughs> Uh, from, <laughs> I think you can <laughs> stare at it. And I'm see in the maple camera. in the middle. <laughs> That's really Cologne, everybody. Brilliant. As always, great to have you here. Thank you, we thank do you, have a great you. show for you today. It's uh, What the Bleep Wednesday coming up a little bit later on. But uh, it's now over for you know, a, a, a couple days now. We've been talking about your know, franchise tags and all that stuff. And unprecedented, a dozen legitimate running backs, not a single one of them. I uh, got franchise tag, and that means it's going to be a major run on running backs. Uh, pardon the pun. Saquon Barkley, of course, for our purposes, based in New York City, and one of the biggest names out there. Did not get a deal done with the Giants. Doesn't mean he won't. Yeah. But Saquon Barkley of Avil, Josh Jacobs, a year removed from being the best running back in the NFL, in his mid-20s, available. The Chargers say goodbye to Austin Eckler. Yeah. J.K. Dobbins coming off an injury. Yeah, that makes some sense. Yeah, but from Tony Pollard to Derrick Henry to Saquon Barkley, and every time I see this list, and it's unprecedented, I say to myself, Willie Colon, what do I know that no one else seems to know? I value the running back. I do, too. I think you need to have a top-quality running back yes, if you're going to win a Super Bowl because late in games – we don't typically ask our quarterback to throw the ball. Patrick Mahomes, you know, on the outside of that conversation, of course, because the Chiefs do trust him to yeah. throw the ball third and two down the field to try to win a game. I need a running back to help me close out games, and now there's a dozen of them available. Yeah, you. I mean, we talked about it yesterday with Isaiah Pacheco and James Cook and what they did for their respective teams. Yes. And how much both of those offense changed and we were able to make an insurgence uh, last year. But overall, it's a blessing in disguise because now if you're a running back, now you can go find a place that's comfortable for you, that you're actually going to thrive in. So if you're the Bears, and I know we talked about this um, in nauseam, but you have a chance to go get Derrick Henry to compliment Caleb Williams and an offensive line that needs help, right? So some of these teams, as much as you look at what's going on, you got to say, okay, now I can go find a guy that can really help me out. Like, if you're a Saquon, the idea of Baltimore or even possibly a Green Bay Packer, because now you get to play in the backfield with Aaron Jones, who's always hurt, at the, you know, towards the sure. back of the season. Um, now things can work out in your favor. So I don't think it's a bad thing. I think now running backs really have to make a push to find the but best But I guarantee you, every one of those teams that thinks they're a playoff team that said no to their incumbent running back is going to go get one of those other running backs, right. and they're going to try to get him for less than the $12 million bucks that the franchise tag would have paid him. But it's a carousel that makes no sense whatsoever to me. I need a running back. Like, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I got one up on all you because I got a running back. Yeah. I got Brees Hall on the New York Jets. I'm thrilled that I got him. But, you know, you guys may not have running backs. There, there are just so few. When we grew up, a team had a running back. Right? Yes. And we knew who it was. There's yeah. a quarterback and a running back, and that was the backfield. And now you need more than one. Even if you have, there's no true, like, bellwether backs. There might be a handful. But that's why you need multiple. And I think that's why the numbers go down as well, because they can only allocate so much money to that position that you need a couple and you need to pay a couple. Yeah, another thing that uh, caught my attention yesterday, it's really great news for me again. I'm having a wonderful day. Yeah. It's <laughs> not great news for, for, well, maybe for you, but for you. You guys, it's bad news. But uh, my quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, that came out on, a, to be fair, a conspiracy theory podcast. So you have to take it for what it's worth. We're not your but, uh, hat. Look, you got to be who you are. Yeah, yeah. You got to own who you are, right? It's about that time. For yes. Yes, it is. So my guy, Aaron Rodgers, pigeon. came out and said exactly what I want to hear, and that is my intent, and that's all you got right there, is to play. Let me see what it says there. Two, three. Four more years, uh, meaning 
that the New York Jets have a chance of winning multiple Super Bowls, <laughs> not just one. <laughs> like, I saw that before I went to bed last That's night, and I'm like, I'm like, ka-ching, a ka-ching. We heard this tune like, last year. Yeah, when he got hurt. This time, right? yeah, no, 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 time. no, about this time yeah. last year, we heard this tune. Yeah, we did hear that tune. Yeah, I'm yes. so glad you're here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, listen, you're not talking me off this fence because I'm loving it. The fact Again. that Aaron Rodgers is even mentally and emotionally <laughs> contemplating giving me as a Jet fan two three and four years you know we talked a lot this past year I will use that very dirty word that starts with the letter D called dynasty oh man oh, it's coming was... folks did we talk it's about coming. that a lot last year was... it is coming you think the Chiefs are a dynasty <laughs> when we're here four years from now wallowing in our morning misery I can promise you this we're going to be having the conversation Kids, if the New York Jets say no. are a no. dynasty. The only dynasty yeah. you're seeing is an old no. soap opera. Okay? Maybe, yeah. maybe not. The characters Just were no. one of my favorite families. Uh, listen, we got lots cooking today. <laughs> we'll get into the whole Saquon Barkley uh, likely destination and much, much more on Aaron Rodgers' promise of playing maybe four more years for the New York Jets. It's all coming up after this. Hi, right, welcome back to the Card Show. Great to have you here. Obviously, uh, the big story in the NFL uh, is not just Saquon Barkley. He might be the biggest name, not named Derrick Henry, to be fair about it. That is now an unrestricted free agent. Now, I'm trying to figure out what the hell the Giants are doing because they also didn't franchise tag their best safety, Xavier McKinney, uh, which tells me that it's, it's kind of starting to smell a little bit New Jersey like rebuild. Uh, considering that uh, you know their best offensive player is now gone, arguably. One of their best defensive players, if not their best defensive player, he's gone too. Obviously, they remain, you know, they have the right to talk to them and try to get deals done outside the scope of the franchise tag. But for the sake of this conversation, let's talk Saquon. I think he makes a lot of sense staying in the division. You go to Philadelphia, you burn the Giants twice every year. You go to Dallas, you burn the Giants twice every year. The Giants, uh, the Cowboys said goodbye to Tony Pollard, so they have an opening. The Eagles said goodbye to DeAndre Swift, so they have an opening. But according to Las Vegas, it's not the Dallas Cowboys. It's not the Philadelphia Eagles. It's your beloved <laughs> oh, Houston Texans. I've been saying it for how long there, yeah. Greg? Now, the Houston Texans had Devin Singletary last year as their running back. He's only 26 years old. He's an above-average running back. They said, get out. Uh, he's not going to be involved with the team as of right now either. And I'm saying to myself, wow, everyone seems to have fallen in love with the notion that the Houston Texans are building something special. How can you not believe that? They have over 30 million in cap space. You have that elite quarterback in CJ Trout. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and also, when you talk about in the division they play in, like when you got a young quarterback, and you just said it earlier, right? It's not about what he can do, Valley. He needs to do his job, but it's about balance. Sure. They want to have a balanced offense. And now that you have a young defense led by Will Anderson and a young head coach in D'Amico Ryans, a, a, a Saquon Barkley, not only because what he can do on the field because he's a great locker room guy, adds stability. So, yes, it may, he would do great in Houston. Yeah, look, I, I, I don't know why Houston's saying goodbye to Singletary, to be honest. I don't know why the Giants are saying to Saquon. I know it comes down to money and guarantees and all that stuff. But, again, I'm vindictive. It's like the last negative trade I have to me that my <laughs> therapist keeps telling me I need to drop it and not be that guy I can't help myself. If you wrong me, I'm coming back at you with guns blazing. If I'm Saquon Barkley, all right, and the New York Giants, in my opinion at least, screwed me last year by franchise tagging me yeah. and refused to negotiate a contract with me and then gave Daniel Jones a four-year, $120 million deal, and he ain't very good, right, and he's less reliable than I am from an injury standpoint staying on the field, I'm ticked off. I want to get back at them. And as much as we've made fun of the implosion in Philadelphia last year, only 10-1 team to ever lose five out of the last six games in the history of the NFL, and they lose to Tampa, and they kind of quit on everybody, and there was a poop show out there in Philadelphia, that's still a very talented team. And, yes, they've got some holes to fill. Kelsey retires. Uh, Fletcher Cox retires. Yeah, yeah. So you do have some holes to fill. But starting with Philly – 
If I'm Saquon Barkley, Penn State kid, Pennsylvania, I can go to Philly, and I know that offense fits me perfectly. I got two great wideouts. I got a really good tight end. I've got a quarterback a little embattled right now, but my game fits them great, and I can stick it to Joe Shane and Brian Dable. I'm all in. And then, of course, flip the script to the Dallas Cowboys, who right now have the third best odds as the destination for Saquon Barkley. I've got a legit quarterback in Dak Prescott. Yep. I've got some holes, obviously. i got to replace my left tackle, Tyron Smith. But i got a legitimate wide receiver. i got two tight ends. i got a really good defense. And I can stick it to Joe Shane and Brian Dable. I want to go to Dallas. Jacoby, you've been here all season. You watch yeah. the Eagles. What's one thing they don't do? Run the Run ball. The ball. Run. Right. So, Run the ball. <laughs> It, it, like, literally, the fans showed up at the practice facility with a sign that said, run, run the, the ball. damn ball. Yeah. If you're Saquon Barkley, why would you even entertain the Philadelphia Eagles? New offensive the coordinator. The New yeah. offensive coordinator. Kellen Moore, he throws the ball. I know he does. But listen, Saquon Barkley's never going to be a 20-carry-a-game guy at this stage of his career. No, but you need to be a factor within the office. You yeah. had DeAndre Swift, and when you were winning football, football games and when you were 10-1 and during a good portion of the season, what did you do and well? They don't throw the, the ball. ball. They don't throw the ball to Swift either. And one thing, so Craig, you make some great points about these other teams you should go to, but put the odds up again. Put the odds back up on the screen. If you don't gamble on sports, you probably shouldn't start. But let me tell you, that's a huge gap between number one and number two. Yes. Right. That is a huge gap. It makes me think, like, what do they know that I don't know? Why are the Texans so far ahead of all these other viable options for Saquon Barkley. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is partially what Willie talked Caps about, please. and that is they've got plenty of dough, mm -hmm. and they did say goodbye to Singletary, so there's a glaring need now on that team to bring in a running back. Let me ask you a question. Go. So you think that Philadelphia or Dallas Cowboys have contacted Saquon Barkley? There's no doubt I, in my mind. You think they have? No, Dallas for sure. sure? I can't speak to Philly because it's a bit of a clown organization right now, and they're more mad at me than they are about fixing the problems <laughs> they have in their own locker room, which is fine, but they'd be stupid not to. But I, I guarantee you Houston has, has a bunch of talks with his agent. And they really want him. That's why they at that uh, percentage right there. Yeah, I don't know how Vegas comes up with this stuff because it's not like the Houston Texans Huge called gap. up the bookmakers and said, yeah. Guess what? I really like yeah. Saquon Barkley. Yeah. 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 We're on third base. I think he fits well with the Texans. Yeah, now I do have to say this, and I got to be fair about it. Listen, I've gotten to know Saquon a little bit. I like Saquon a lot. And I've seen some things out of him, especially you know his rookie season, where we were like, oh, my God, yeah. he might be the best running back yeah. of a generation. If I'm keeping it up, what do you say, a, a buck? buck, buck, keep a buck if I'm keeping it a buck. Keep it a buck. If I'm keeping it a hundred, all right, <laughs> then I got to say this because I, I told the audience I would never, ever lie to you. If you're keeping it a buck, Saquon Barkley has been a disappointment. Based on where he got it's drafted. harsh, Craig. I know. No, it's harsh. True. It's true. I want to keep it clean. Based on availability, not performance. He has had some great moments, no doubt about it. We all talk about the rookie year, which is now five years ago. Correct. Right. Saquon Barkley, as the number two overall pick, has been a major disappointment. Because think about this. Major? Major. Wow. Saquon Barkley and the New York Giants. One playoff win. One. Yeah. One. You agree. So he was not this transformative player who took the Giants from a decade of losing, you know, to the promised land year after year after year. He made the playoffs but he also, once. But he also wasn't the problem, right? right. Like, you're talking about a guy who was Well, he great. was because he was hurt. Well, sure. I mean, that's the game. It's a 99% injury rate. Like, guys get dinged. You can't, there's no way around that. But right. overall, what his what his role within off, he's a great pa he's a great pass protector in, the yeah. in a passing game. He can run the hell out of football. They even implemented the Wildcat for him, and he did a great job in that. So his production is there. He just couldn't stay healthy. I would right. argue that without getting too in the weeds on it. His production was not there because he wasn't available enough. And but even like – because like, he wasn't available because they had a bad line. They had a bad line. He couldn't run the ball. The right. production's not there. You know, mm -hmm. it's all a symbiotic a relationship game. with the team. I'm a, it's thank a team you. Game. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. right. Unlike it's this just, show, it's just, <laughs> yeah. it's just not on him to, to, to run, pass. Yeah. Uh, you know. All I'm saying is I love Saquon Barkley. No, He's you, gonna, no you don't. But, it, it, but it doesn't, it doesn't, love, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't sound like him right now. Where's the butt? I love Saquon Barkley. 
You throwing a knife. But at but I have to acknowledge the fact what every Giant fan, if you're a real Giant fan, you might be hurt that Saquon's gone. You might be pissed at the front office. They couldn't get a deal done. You have every right to feel that way. He's been the cornerstone of your offense for the last three years when he's healthy and on the field. But as the number two overall pick, yes. who supposedly had talent on loan from God, right, as Dave Gettleman said, right, this generational God-given talent, unfortunately, he has not stayed healthy. Yep. He has not stayed on the field. He was not a thousand-yard back last year, and the New York Giants were hoping for a lot more. That being said, I don't need a running back. But if you need a running back, I highly recommend Saquon Barkley at the right number. You sound like a sommelier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you like the Cabernet yes, right. or would you like Boone's Farm? <laughs> I'm a Boone's Farm guy because I don't like to spend money on liquor. In any event, we got much more football coming your way. Much more on Aaron Rodgers guaranteeing the Jets two, three, four more years and at least three Super Bowl Stop appearances over that uh, period of time. Really? But you have to ask this question. San Francisco, clearly the class of the NFC. No one's going to argue that. But are they an automatic guaranteed lock to get back to the big game in February? We'll get into that next. Hey, real quick, uh, so before we get to first and football, <laughs> Buffalo Bills uh, rock star Josh Allen, who, you know, uh, broke up with his longtime girlfriend to start dating Haley Steinfeld, mm. uh, who's an actress or something, is over in uh, Paris, France. Never been to France myself. Oh. I'm sure you guys have. Well, I have. Yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah. Have have say, That's what leave. people say, but they're very rude over there, I've, yeah. been, I've been told. Oh. Uh, in any event, I've never been. But apparently Josh Allen was there, and he's having one hell of a time, according to his Instagram post, if I may. There's Josh <laughs> Allen. Um, my pants ripped at dinner. Ha. Uh, that's an emoji. Uh, <laughs> didn't want my cheeks out. I love Paris. Yeah, that's your quarterback. Yeah. yeah. That's my I rip my pants right when I rip my pants from time to time. Yeah, I'm well. No. Nah. Yeah. He's, ha he's having a great time. He's enjoying yeah. the cuisine. Yeah, yeah. apparently. Over there cuisine. He's enjoying the cuisine. And, and the cheeks thankfully, out. he broke up with his longtime girlfriend, and she's moved to New York City and is having herself a whale of a time in my city. And thank God she's here. Nope, She'll be joining that's, us that's next week live in studio. That's my quarterback. To talk about how bad a lover Josh Allen is. Uh, in any event, for <laughs> that. Why you be throwing shade at a lot of guys? Because I'm a Jet fan. <laughs> that's why. Yeah. Right. I love Josh Allen. That dude could quarterback my team, except I have a great quarterback already in Aaron Rodgers, so yeah, I don't yeah. need him. But that's another story for another day. Here's Jacoby and first in football. Let's first go. in football, we start with Debo Samuel of the Niners. And he had some very interesting yes. perspective to give about the Super Bowl trip that they had in the future of the franchise. All right, let's use this motivation when you get back in the lab just to put yeah. yourself in a position and try to do your best to, you know, get back. Because people just say, you know, it's always the next year. But I heard that in 2019 and it took four more years to get where we at. So, I mean, it's not that easy as people think to get to the Super Bowl and, you know, it takes everything. He makes a really good point. Now, really? Craig, the question for you is just how fragile is the Niners' Super Bowl window? Yeah, I don't think it's fragile because I do think they are heads and shoulders better than every other team in the NFC. But if you just go back a month and take stock of how hard it was for them this year to get to the Super Bowl and the comebacks they needed against both Green Bay in that rain Saturday night rain game, mm -hmm. and then, of course, down 17-0 you know, to the Detroit Lions, they didn't just cruise into the Super Bowl. Now, Regular season was easier for them, for sure. And they locked up the number one seed before, you know, week 18. But I appreciate what Debo is saying. Yeah, on paper, we might be the best team. Matter of fact, we are the best team on paper in the entire NFC. But it's not like other sports possibly where just roll the ball out and because on paper we're better, we're going to win. Right. And I think that's what he's talking about. And like he said, look, 2019, I would have thought we're going back every single year. Hell, Dan Marino thought he was going to go to more than one Super Bowl. <laughs> right. He right. didn't. No. So I appreciate what Debo is saying. And, you know, that's kind of that veteran leadership and maturity of we can't lose sight of the fact that, you know, the window is never this big. To win, we got to get back there, and there's no guarantee we do. Yeah, I mean, listen, I've been to two Super Bowls, and outside of being cliche and saying, you know, listen, it's, it's, it's hard to go back. It's a different year, a different team. The, real, the reality of it is each team has a different theme. The year we went to the Super Bowl, 
One thing that I, I took pride in, and I think a lot of guys I played with took pride in, that we were extremely selfless. There wasn't a task that we weren't willing to take on. Sure. Even if the task team was bigger than us, we was willing to go get it. And sometimes when you're dealing with a championship alpha or a team that wants to be a championship team, everybody's motivation is different. Some guys are fighting for the bag. Other guys are fighting for the title. Some guys are just fighting to stay on the well, team and, and be on the team. Here's and the good news about San Francisco. The entire core – now, there, there's some other – Guys throwing household names, let me be clear, that they may not resign, and that's kind of what happens as you, yeah. you know, get more successful. But the core group of studs on this team stays together. You know, Young's not going to be back, I don't think. He also is a disappointing addition uh, for them. As you take a look there, it's Ayuk, obviously, he's on that you know, option deal. Uh, Samuel, Kittle, you know, the stars on offense, the big stars on defense, are all coming back as well. And the good thing for San Francisco is that the teams, however we want to order them, let's not argue about that, the teams that are chasing San Francisco have all taken hits thus far. Dallas loses their starting left tackle. They lose their starting running back. They obviously need linebacker help, right? Philadelphia loses Fletcher Cox. They lose Brandon Graham. And now you lose Jason Kelsey. So the other teams that are right there with them, me specifically Dallas and Philly, have already taken hits to the armor. Sure. Now, it doesn't mean they won't replace those guys and be right back where they were. So San Francisco's in a very good spot, but I appreciate what Debo's saying. Absolutely. And not to mention the two teams that they played in the playoffs and had to come back and beat are still coming back strong. Yep. This guy, remember him? He's he was the worst. Jet. Stop Jamal it, Adams. Greg. Do you remember what the Jets got in return for Jamal Adams when he went to the Seahawks? We thought he'd be an impact player with the Seahawks. Well, guess what? He played pretty well the first year, and now he has been released. Look at what the Jets got in return for Jamal Adams in a fourth-round pick. Yeah. Question for you, Craig. Is this the most competent thing the Jets have done in the last five years? It's not even close. <laughs> yeah, it is the most. And uh, it's strange how competent it was. Look, Joe Douglas has not been a great general manager, to be fair, but he's always gotten the better out of trades. He's had one really good draft. The draft, you know, they obviously brought Garrett Wilson in mm -hmm. and Sauce Gardner uh, and those types of guys. We saw for sure. Um, but he's been better at deals than he has been in his five years here uh, drafting players. Jamal Adams is a douche. Jamal Adams will go down as one of the most disappointing and overrated players in the history of the NFL. And what's sad about that is that he was on a track to be one of the great defensive players of his generation. He's a bad guy, he's not a good player, and he will not be in the NFL next year, nor should he be. I mean, what do you want me to say to that? Like, like, you, just, you just tore wow. down the man from the top to the bottom. Wow. And I, real. You, the first of yeah. all, I love when he, I was I was here when he when he got drafted, and I loved him. I loved his passion. Obviously, he has a pedigree. His dad played for the Giants, on and on and on. The problem with Jamal Adams isn't that he's a bad football player. He just hasn't found the scheme that fits him. He did have it some part. He can't tackle, no, he can and tackle. he doesn't cover well. He doesn't cover well, 100%. So what's he But he's an all-pro. Like, and the guy at the end of the day had nine sacks in his career when he went to first team all P on second team all pro. So for me, I, it's just a matter of where he goes. He has to be effective, where they can use him as a nickel or a potential outside linebacker. Because right now he can't cover. Right. And that's the biggest issue. And if you can't cover, you can't play. Jamal Adams' career is over. Moving on to third <laughs> and football. We have some new details about the right. Mike Evans contract in Tampa Bay. We thought it was going to be worth much more money, but it's incentive-based, and now total guarantees are around $29 million. Now, that is important because the Bucs are still trying to sign Baker Mayfield. Yeah. So, does this tell you – what does this tell you about where they're headed next season? I'm confused by it because Mike Evans, at least in my opinion, would have gotten a lot more in the open market. Remember, he, not even debatably, was the number one yeah. potentially available – wide receiver free agent. Now that goes to Calvin Ridley. And the wide receiver uh, free agency class is dwindling very, very quickly. It's not robust at all. Calvin Ridley is the best available guy. He's obviously really good, but he's not as good as Mike Evans, at least career-wise. Gabe Davis, obviously, leaving Buffalo, will be sought after. Odell's a shell of himself. So if you're a team that was like, hey, we need a wide receiver, hi, Kansas City. Uh, you know, Calvin Ridley's the best guy on that board. Uh, which is why Mike Evans, look, I appreciate Mike Evans saying I want to play my entire career for one team. Sure. I love that as a fan. If I'm a Bucks fan, you know, that guy doesn't pay for a meal as long as he's alive and he's in Tampa, you know, dining at a restaurant or having a drink. But that doesn't make any business sense. Because if you are, and we all agree, the number one 
free agent wide receiver. And you've got teams like Kansas City, like the New York Jets, like the Buffalo Bills, Maybe the Houston Texans, who sure. you talked about yep. earlier this week, despite having two wide receivers, your tank tail coming off the injury. There were teams out there that I got to believe would have given him more than what we're now learning is the $29 million guaranteed. I'd love to see what the incentives are. If they're like easy peasy, the then yeah, then he's going to get $40 million guaranteed because yeah. there's $11 million in incentives. But you know, incentives are tricky, mm-hmm. right? I mean, going back to Saquon Barkley, yeah. he had a bunch of incentives. He didn't earn a nickel from them. So if you tell me that the incentives are more than 50 catches, more than 500 yards, like things he has done every year of his career, I feel better about the deal. But the fact that Mike Evans was willing to take appreciably less than he would have gotten on the open market tells you that Tampa – might be a good place to live. Also, he appreciates Todd Bowles, who's done a fairly good job down in that division. Also, you got to understand, outside of Baker Mayfield, you know, they got to get themselves a center. They got to get some pieces on defense. So now that you get Mike Evans willing to take a hometown discount, it lets me know what we talked about earlier in the week. That one, he didn't want to leave. He wanted to remain in Tampa and keep his family comfortable. And also, he believes in the organization. So well, this is a win for the Bucs. It also tells you that Baker Mayfield's coming back. Right, yes, because yes. If, I'm, if I'm negotiating with Mike Evans, the first question Mike Evans is going to ask after money is, yeah. who's the quarterback? Sure. And if the answer is, we're not sure, then I'm not signing that deal. But you I know gotta you're getting kn- somebody. With Russell out there, right. Russell. Phil's out there, you're yeah. not getting, right. you're but not I'm getting not, a downgrade. I, I'm not signing the contract if you can't tell me who the quarterback yeah, is. Yeah, but Baker doesn't make me come back for you. Like, I think maybe oh, he I did. Think he does. I think, I I think Baker Mike Evans had, if you had, had a, a really if, good if deal. If they go to Mike year. Evans and be like, hey, we, you know, let's, we're working out Baker's there, but we got a chance to get Russell, that still makes me say, okay, it's a better option than you saying, I'm going to go get me. Don't uh, forget, though, that I'm, deal got done. Jacoby Brissett or somebody. First of all, I love Jacoby's. But I'll say this. is, I think this what this deal tells me me and the fact that he could have gotten more in the open market tells me that he chose consistency. He chose he didn't want to uproot. He didn't want to go to a new team. Didn't want yeah. to wear a new uniform. Yeah, didn't want to I go get that. a new right. you know, offensive coordinator. He said, I like what I've got going on here and maybe I'll take a little bit less just to keep everything consistent, which makes me feel like Baker is coming. I appreciate it. I mean, I can't compare myself to Mike Evans at all. Why not? But I mean, I did the same thing. I was offered double uh, to move to Philadelphia uh, and or stay in New York City. And I took half as much money to stay in New York so I don't have to move my family. So I totally can appreciate if that's part of the decision making there. They would have set you on fire out there. Yeah, I also. Yeah. I have a lot of follow-up <laughs> questions during the break. I have a lot yeah. of follow-up wow. questions during the break. Wow. Yeah, you can't just drop that. They would have dragged you by the horse going down Broad Street. <laughs> wow. I'd probably be the number one rated talk show host without in Philadelphia. Yeah, without a doubt. But uh, I couldn't leave my house. But what after you just get to that city two weeks ago? They would have yeah. dragged wow. So I, I do get it. Sometimes it's not about the money. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to fourth and football. Dalton Schultz, the tight end for Willie's Cologne's Texans. <laughs> he re-signed a three-year, $36 million deal. We all remember him from the Cowboys. We had a good year for the Texans last year. Yep. Willie, your Texans are making moves. Yeah, they needed to, man. He obviously had a hell of a career with the Cowboys, but now with the addition of Nico Collins, Tank Dells, he's kind of part of that three-headed dog down there in Texans uh, in Houston. Excuse me. So, I, listen, it's a deal. He's got paid. He's it's about 28 years old. He's a young tight end. He's making. They have 70 million in cap space, as I mentioned earlier. It's just a win for the Texans. I, I, look, good for him, right? Yeah. But I'm still amazed. I know we're kind of living in the era of the tight end, mm-hmm. and that's kind of the direction the NFL is going. Which is why the Bowers kid out of Georgia is going to be mm-hmm. a high draft pick. Yeah. And we talk about guys like Schultz and Kelsey and all those guys. But the fact that a tight end who had what do you have 50 catches last year, right? Ballpark. Yeah, sure. Uh, within a couple of that, right? Less than 60. A guy with 50 catches can get $36 million over three years, and Saquon Barkley can't get 12? Yeah. Like, But he's a security blanket for a young draft. What are we? The dude had 635 yards and 50 catches. But if and also, he got thirty six million. If you look at the Cowboys, the Cowboys head in production. Ferguson, Ferguson did the same adult. thing that yeah. Schultz did. You look yeah. at Laporta, someone for like the Lions. It right. seems like there's more tight ends available. We value the tight end more than we value yes. the running back now. Yes, not in my world. I will take the stud running back over the stud tight end all day. They're telling me we got a break. We have a new producer upstairs. He's very Up panicky. Scott. He's yelling and screaming. <laughs> Scott. Please break. Please break. Do a great job, Scott. All right, we'll take a quick break. Take a boat. We got much more NFL coming your way. The Dallas Cowboys are not all in. And I can prove that to you by how they're treating Micah Parsons with a major contract decision 
yesterday. Wait till you hear this one. It's nuts. So the Dallas Cowboys owner, Jerry Jones, keeps saying, I'm all in. I'm all in. <laughs> well, if you're Micah Parsons, it doesn't seem like he's all in. The Cowboys yesterday picked up the fifth-year option, which was a no-brainer. He had to do that. Gives you a century next year to negotiate with Micah Parsons. But they were very, very clever mm. about how they picked up the fifth-year option. You have to designate the position that the player plays because the fifth-year option scale changes. If you're a quarterback, it's one number. A running back, it's another number. If you're a linebacker, it's one number. If you're a defensive end, it's a smaller number. Yep. So the Dallas Cowboys designated Micah as a defensive end for the purposes of picking up the fifth-year option. And by doing so, if it ever got to that fifth-year option, and there's no way it will, they would save $3 million, which is really like Big Mac tip money <laughs> for Jerry Jones uh, in that fifth year. Now, there's a lot to break down in this. So first off, let's take a look. Over the last couple of years, what percentage of snaps was he alignment? Ah. Well, the majority of them. Mm -hmm. All right, 75%. I'm, uh, what's that say? 67%? 87%. Damn it, Craig. Where are glass? glasses, Craig? I'm it's having, right in front of uh, you. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. I'm having cataract <laughs> surgery in two weeks, all right? Oh, it's okay. all good. I could do that for you. 87.7. <laughs> I can see it now. 87.7. All right, so hard to argue uh, if you want to designate him as a defensive end when he's played the far majority of snaps at defensive end. But it sends out a bad message that two years from now, you're looking to get him, quote unquote, not on the cheap, but, alone. but for less money. There is no way at all that Micah Parsons' representatives will allow him to play football in year five for the Dallas Cowboys without a major contract extension. So, they had to pick up the option. This is when you do it after year three. Oh, that better. There you go. That's Craig. rude. That looks like. <laughs> How you doing, Craig? It looks like the world could see that, okay. Craig. Yeah. That says 87.7%. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Okay. I appreciate that. That's better. Yes, look, yeah. uh, my eyesight sucks. Good. I acknowledge that. I'm having the surgery in a couple weeks, and I'll be just fine. Thank okay. you very much. All right? That being said, <laughs> it just it stinks to me. What? Because. He's not going to play on the fifth-year option, so you're never going to save the $3 million. He's going to get the max deal you can get uh, based on being a great defensive player, regardless of whether you want to label him as an end or a linebacker, right? So if we all acknowledge that he's never going to play on that fifth-year option, all right, and he, he'll hold out if it ever gets to the point of not getting a deal done at some point in the next 12 months or so, why go through this exercise of labeling him or designating him a defensive end when he's never going to sign that contract or play on the fifth-year option? And I say that because the optics are bad. And the optics are, on one side, I've got an owner telling me as a fan, I'm all in. And on the other side, we're not acting like we're all in. Goodbye, Tyron Smith. We're going to get cheap over $3 million bucks on a contract he's never going to sign yep. in two years. And I'm saying to myself, I think if I'm a Cowboy fan, and I've given this a lot of thought, <laughs> I think I'm about done with Jerry Jones. Well, I, think a, I think a diehard Cowboy fan is now saying it's been 30 years yeah. since we went to a Super Bowl, right? right? It never gets any better. We say no to guys like Rex Ryan. We have no interest in Bill Belichick. We're not at the forefront of getting every major available free agent, right? We've kind of got this good team we put together, not great team. We can't hold a candle to the San Francisco 49ers, right? We can't win a home playoff game. And I'm starting to think, on behalf of Cowboy fans, that maybe we want a new owner. Oh. How about that? Oh, oh this is, well, you How about that? Well. Great job. I tell you this. If you're a loyal Cowboy Talk fan, to me. you're not going to disown 
your your owner. I that, think that, it's that, happening that, already. No, it's Hardaway. been happening. <laughs> it's I, been happening. I think Cowboy fans no. have gotten to a stage where, yeah, it was great and it was cute early no. on, no. but 30 years later, maybe, and I'm saying this respectfully, maybe the owner is the problem here. Have How you been that? to the Cowboy Stadium? I have. And have you seen the sellout crowd? There? Yes, yes. Uh, they're not disowning. They love their Cowboys. <laughs> they don't love their owner. Well, and there's well, a major if he, difference if he, there. If he be quiet, everything will be all right. But business is business, though. Yes. Business is business. And if you could cut down on costs, that's what you're going to do as an owner and as a Cowboy. But they're really not going to cut down on well, costs on this one. So well, why I'm, announce something that allows people like me to I come mean, on TV million, and million. attack it? Well, a couple things. Number one, your eyesight is bad, but your yeah. sports media takes are great. I mean, right. the idea that you're taking this and turning it into like a, a Cowboys fan I, don't believe in Jerry Jones right. thing. Turn your back brilliant job. Brilliant, is a wild brilliant job by you, yeah, Mr. Carter. Brilliant job. But about this one in particular issue, my problem with this is we all agree it's insignificant. We all agree that he's not going to play on this, right? But if it is insignificant, then put the extra three million dollars on my contract, right? Because now you're just making, now you're just kind of disrespecting me and making me feel like you're trying to set myself up to not, you're trying to nickel and dime me in a position which I'm your best. Yeah, but player. this goes back to what Jerry does well. He lights a fire underneath, underneath his players' butt, right? There's a common story where Michael Irvin wanted to get paid, he went into his office, and Mike, you know, playmaker was like, "Hey, man, I want to get paid, pay me top dollar." He goes, "All right, win me a Super Bowl." Right. It's the same thing for Michael Parsons. If you want to be the top uh, highest defensive player in the league, help me go win a Super Bowl. Because what we know right now at the defensive position in his career, he has 40 sacks, he has 89 quarterback hits, he's a monster coming off the edge. But we saw time after time this year, especially against the Niners, he was getting blocked by fullbacks one on one. He was getting blocked and destroyed by Trent Williams at sure. left tackle. So there's times where he gets lost in the sauce, even to the point where they had to put him at a true linebacker position to get production, right? Listen, I love Mike Parsons. At the end of the day, we need more out of you because right. what we, all we've heard out of you, especially coming out of Green Bay, you couldn't stop the run, right? You weren't as effective as ever you could could have been because what we see out of T.J. Watt and Miles Garrett, no matter who's on them, they get home, right? That's yeah. not the same thing for Michael Parsons. So for me, if I'm Michael Parsons, let this be the motivation. But you talked about his representatives. His representation also represents Darwin James. Remember what happened with Dar Darwin yes. James? Yes. He set out. So Mike is not going to play. He's, he's not. He's not. He's he's not look, he's going to play this year. He's not going to play on a fifth-year no. option. No. And to me, the bad PR that comes with trying to get cute, not it, 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 they're not going to save the $3 million because yeah. he's never going to play on that. And I know it's like $21 million or $24 million, so no one's crying for Micah Parsons, but I will guarantee you as sure as I'm sitting here, he never steps on a football field on that fifth-year option. So why go through the exercise, which is nothing but bad optics? I think Cowboy fans – are done with the owner. So, so Craig, no, no, I don't think you're no, wrong. I don't want to breeze over that. I don't think you're wrong. Totally wrong. Bring it on. Here's my question he's for you. Totally wrong. If you're a Cowboys fan and you're done with Jerry Jones, yeah, you understand exactly what's up next. Steven, Steven Jones. Jones. So you know, it's, right. not, it's not like they're going to sell the team. Like, no, I don't want to get, not. I don't want to get, make this political at all. But there's also like inheritance tax and stay and all that kind of stuff. And when you transfer that kind of wealth, you know, when you die and all that. So to me. I'm not kidding. I've given this a lot of thought. I talked to a lot of Cowboy fans. <laughs> They're usually yelling at me online, that being the case. I think the bloom is off the rose. I think the – not – we're not dire Cowboy fans, mm -hmm. all right? I think the diehard Cowboy fan is at their wit's end, and they're done. It's enough of Jerry Jones if I'm a Cowboy fan. And by the way, here's the body of evidence – 28 years. Sure. 28 years. What have you done? Let's just call 30 roundup. What have you done in the last 30 years that makes me believe that you're the right guy to bring me to a Super Bowl? I've given you 30 years to bring me to a Super Bowl, and you haven't done it. You made me watch Jason Garrett for a decade <laughs> on the sideline. Now you're making me watch year five of Mike McCarthy. Yeah. What have you done? I think you're going to see, for the first time maybe ever, mutiny? a little mutiny no. amongst oh, Cowboy fans against Jerry Jones. And I, you, can, you can almost <laughs> smell it. It's in the air. It's in the air, Tim Hardaway. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, it sells out every yeah. week. They're going to, again, I want to be clear. It don't matter who the owner is. Cowboy fans are going to watch their Cowboys that's play. That's all that matters. Nobody goes to that stadium to watch Jerry Jones but in his box. Uh, well, Nobody. Well, they, they watch him speak all the time. Because he's the only owner that does it. Right. Right. That's what I'm but saying. 
That ain't why people go watch the uh, no. Dallas Cowboys play. <laughs> they have a love affair with the uniform, the cheerleaders, the and star. the star on the helmet. No question. There is not a love affair with Jerry Jones. I would not be surprised if Jerry Jones sells the team. Would not surprise me one little bit. It's a wrap. Couldn't get it done. Stop it. 30 years. Stop couldn't it. Couldn't get it That's done. That's not going to happen. And by the way, what do you think the Cowboys get in the open market? $12 billion? Way more than that. Yeah. Way more. Way more than that. being silly. I mean, <laughs> In any event, we got to take a quick break here. Much more on the Cowboy demise coming up. And here's that question. Let's double down on the Cowboys. Is there now a culture problem with the Dallas Cowboys? It starts with Jerry. <laughs> you see how that goes? And people say there's no continuity or rhythm to this show. Cowboys to Cowboys coming up right after this. Welcome back to the Cut Show. We have your yeah. early morning headlines, and we start with this from Russell Wilson. Yes. The most sought after free agent on the market had some interesting things to say about where his next destination. It says he's looking for, quote, a team with a history of winning. Hmm. Here we what go. What does <laughs> that mean? A history of winning. Yeah. One could argue the Giants have a history of winning. Yeah. One could argue the Jets have a history of winning. Uh, not really. Not but really. one could also argue that Willie Steelers have a history of winning. What does this tell you about where it's Tim Steelers? Uh, Tim, yeah. The first thing it tells you is that he ain't going to Atlanta. That's, <laughs> the, that's the first thing. Look, I think Timmy brought it up first yesterday, so he gets he owns it. Uh, the Steelers make a lot of sense. The, they're a good team. They made the playoffs. They're always over 500. Great organization, support-wise. Great culture, as you always talk yes, about. Sir. You got a legitimate head coach that everybody loves and respects. You brought in a new offensive coordinator. You got two young stud wide receivers who are a little temperamental, but are very good players. You can run the football on above average defense. If I'm Russell Wilson, I may want to look to the NFC because the voyage and the path to a Super Bowl is easier than the AFC. But I don't think there's a situation necessarily in the NFC right now that is better or as good as the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I think if you had a short list of teams that Russell Wilson would want to play for, the Steelers have to be on a short list. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I I think right now you talk about what the Steelers need is a quarterback who's going to be one stable and two can deliver. Like Russell still can play. Like as much as you talk, we talk about him and Sean Payton's relationship. Like he played better with Sean Payton, especially towards the middle of the season. So right now, what he needs to do is going forward with at the age of 35 is leave out on top. Because when he was at the Seattle Seahawks, he was a champion. Now he took this two-year dip with Denver, and it's been a dumpster fire. Now he gets back. He goes back to Pittsburgh that has a coach that's not going to throw him underneath the bus, the bus and Mike Tomlin. Right. You got a defense to back him up, and you got weapons on the outside, and you're going to run the ball underneath. Off, off, off. And let's be honest, if you're if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers and you're looking at the prospect of trying to run it back with Kenny Pickett, who you lost all faith in last year and played Mason Rudolph in key games, not only down the stretch, but obviously in the playoffs, over, you yeah. can't convince Steeler fans that Kenny Pickett's the answer. Kenny Pickett's under contract. He's not making that much money. You bring Russell Wilson for the league minimum, which he also acknowledged yesterday. He's going to play for the bottom line salary because Denver's paying him 39 million bucks regardless. And it makes a lot of sense. I was trying to think after the show yesterday, is there an NFC team that I could claim today is kind of where Tampa was three years ago when Tom Brady went there, where they got all the pieces. You just don't have the right quarterback. And the reality is that, there isn't an answer as clear as it was for Tom Brady to go to Tampa you know, three or four years ago and win a Super Bowl. There are some decent teams in the NFC. The only issue with Pittsburgh, of course, is the gauntlet of that division. Yeah. Oh, two yeah. games against Cincinnati, two games against the Baltimore Ravens, two games against that Browns yeah, defense, defense. Yep. and the rest of the AFC great quarterbacks that you have to play against. But I would not be shocked. If this happens so, quickly. Craig, we have a very helpful graphic of the teams that are looking for quarterback help yeah. right now, starting quarterback help. And if, you, if, you, if you view this graphic through the history of winning, obviously the Patriots would be the top but of the list. No chance. Right. right? Absolutely yeah. no chance. Because there's no Belichick. And then you start looking at it like, 
Who, 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 which one of these teams does Russell Wilson make a Super Bowl contender? The only one. What? The only one. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers. The New York yeah. Giants are so many players no away chance. from competing. Maybe in their the Vikings. I know Atlanta's got some, got some guys, got sure some pieces right. Right. for sure. AFC. Minnesota Vikings. Uh, listen, they don't have a running attack right now. They don't have their best player under contract right now. And I think they're going backwards, not forwards. Uh, the Commanders are a joke. <laughs> the only other team that interests me. If I'm him on that list, would be the Raiders. Yep. And it'd be the Raiders because I'm a vindictive son of a bitch. Yeah. And if you give me the opportunity to go play for the Raiders, meaning I get the opportunity twice a year to stick it to Sean Payton specifically on a very personal level, that intrigues me. Because the money's the money. Neither team's going to do anything to affect the bottom line. I'm getting 39 million bucks, yep. and Denver's paying me the majority of it. Uh, I'm going to get two million bucks from whoever I go play for. So it's not about money. I know where my money's coming from. Mm-hmm. If I have a chance to play for a team that has Devontae Adams, maybe they do resign Josh Jacobs or a legitimate quality running back, right? And I got Antonio Pierce, who did a very good job yeah. in the second half of the season last year and beat the Kansas City Correct. Chiefs and showed some promise like, hey, don't sleep on the Raiders. And that was with Aiden O'Connell as their quarterback. As a guy that can't separate emotion from that type of decision, I think Pittsburgh's the best place to go. But I go to Vegas because I want to burn Sean Payton. So let me ask you a question, Willie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why didn't he just say, or why isn't the wording, I want to go to a contender? I want to go to a Super Bowl contender. Why the wording, history of winning? Well, because winning, a history of winning brings direction, right? Like, you can have one or two good years in your franchise, but once you break up a locker room like like uh, Craig's right. Jets, when they went to back-to-back AFC Championship, I joined that team right after they, uh, you know, lost back-to-back AFC Championship. That place was nowhere. Like, like they, cause they lost so many leaders, there was no direction. The Rex was really trying to salvage anything and everything he could. The older, older guys who were supposed to be vocal weren't vocal, and it was just they just lost the culture. When you have a culture and winning, now it's a front office thing, right? Now the front office is guiding and has the directions on how to get back to the promised land. It's not a head coach or a locker room getting you there. So I think that's what he's talking about. He wants to go to a place where if Mike Tomlin and for whatever reason aren't on the same page, he knows the Rooney's going to get him on track, especially the, the, the general, man or, uh, general manager. Look, I'd love to see him in New York, but the Giants are so far away. He's not going to be a backup to no, Aaron Rodgers. Dude. I really think there's only two teams to consider on that list that we put up there, and it's the Raiders for personal reasons, and the Raiders aren't a bad team, obviously. They came on late, and it's the Steelers are the best situation unless you're scared of the division, and I don't think anyone goes into a game scared, obviously, but that would be the only reason for me to hesitate on going to Pittsburgh is to navigate the AFC North and all those teams. You might be the worst quarterback yeah. in that division, to be yeah. fair. Not knowing what Deshaun Watson's going to be. Well, if they bring resign Flacco. <laughs> yeah. Which they might. Yeah. Yeah. Which we'll get to might. that later. So, yeah, I think Pittsburgh's the easy choice. Unless you want to you know, just stick it to Sean Payton, which I would like to do. But that's not him. He's already talked about it. He likes to keep his, you know, Dude, he's a remember high, this. moral guy. It may not never be him. Never, never. But when you get humiliated yeah. by the head coach yeah. and he pants you on national TV. I like that. And you stood mm. there and took it. Yes. That that stays in the brain. Yes. Well, for you, Craig, like no, you, I've, you I've, set his house on I've fire. I've coined a term called competitive. It's when you're competitive and petty. Yes, and I think that, I like Craig, that. You are competitive. Yeah. Were you ever? Did was there ever a coach you had in your career? And you played for some legends, obviously. Right. Were or a situation, a team Pony. that you you like, on a personal level? I want to burn them to the ground. And don't say the Knicks, please. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. No, no. You know, it, it, it never was. Uh, personal it was just business you know and you go out there and and play the way you're supposed to play and take care of the things you're supposed to take care of you might hear some grumblings about somebody saying something about you and and um, disliking you or something right. like that and then you know you take it to another level but I, I, me with, with what Russell Wilson went through national TV what you just said uh, that's personal yes that's personal and if he wants to really really get back at him and 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 play against him 
I'll go to the Raiders. That's if that, like you said, but we don't think now you didn't have that issue. Yeah, he don't have that. You didn't have that issue. But, it, but his but his wife might convince him. <laughs> you right. His wife might convince <laughs> him. Come on, she, she, she has that venom in her. Right. Yes. She'd be like, "Yo, we got to go get that." <laughs> And we, we gotta yeah. make him understand she that, in that you know yeah, I that too. I, that too. Yeah. <laughs> Pittsburgh's fun though. Moving on to our second headline that involves the aforementioned Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott was asked about any culture issues within the Cowboys locker room, and here is how he answered that tricky question. So my point is, yeah, that's something I've always bragged on and took pride in. So if there's questions of that, questions, concerns in that, um, I feel attacked. Uh, I'm sure some guys in the locker room do, um, but at the end of the day, uh, it's a business, and and the way that this this business plays out, people don't get exactly what they wanted. There's always there's always sourness, I guess you can say somewhere. So, they asked the question for a reason. But do you think there's an actual cultural problem within the Cowboys? Let me just say this: No, um, I think culture is the most overused word in sports now. It's like leadership, right? You show me a team that wins, I guarantee you, you'll show me a team littered with leaders, great culture, everyone's on the same page. You show me a team that loses, it's the culture, it's the lack of leadership. We come up with these action words in sports because it makes us feel good about ourselves that we can point to something intangible and have a conversation about it. There's not a problem with the culture of the Dallas Cowboys. They won 12 games this past year. They won 12 games the year before that. They had a home playoff game. Obviously, they lost it to the Green Bay Packers. I'm with Dak. When you say that the Dallas Cowboys have a culture problem, you're talking about the faces of a team. Oh, Dak's not a leader. Yeah. Oh, the guys won't run through fire for Dak. And conversely, on whoever the guy is on defense that you want to point out as the, you know, the leader of the defense or a coaching staff, it's crap. The notion of culture on teams is an action word that we use to make ourselves feel better when we're being critical or praising a team. I guarantee you the culture in the Kansas City Chiefs locker room is great A. But I saw a lot of fighting on the sideline mm. this past year. If the Kansas City Chiefs had lost, they didn't. If they had lost, I guarantee you the offseason bugaboo would have been, oh, the culture is a problem in the Kansas City Chief locker room. It's crap. Dak Prescott is a top 10 quarterback. The guys love playing with him, and that's it. So let's not invent a situation that doesn't exist. Their problem in Dallas is not the culture amongst the guys. It's the owner. Yeah. He's becoming the problem. And if I do a very quick cursory look, at my very active Twitter account this morning. <laughs> very active. I'm in a good place because Cowboy fans are agreeing with me. Yeah. Cowboy fans, thank God, someone on TV has the guts to say what I've been thinking. It's Jones's problem, not Dax. Yeah, but the culture problem, it starts with Jerry, right? If there's a problem to be had, because right now all we hear is about what Jerry's going to do and what he wants to do and never deliver, right? Dak honestly hasn't won in the playoffs. We get that, but it starts with Jerry. The fact that players, and we talk about it week after week, have to answer to questions that sta – or answer to statements that Jerry has said, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Like, like I've never dealt with that. It's, it's loud mouth – as Rex Ryan was, right? And you love Rex and I love Rex. Yep. There was never a question about why we had to defend Rex. Rex spoke for himself and stood on his own uh, on his own merit. So, for me, the fact that guys like Mike uh, and Dak and everybody else have to say, hey, despite having a game, this is what Jerry said. Jerry says he's all in. What does that mean to you, Dak? Like, that's a distraction at the end of the day. It's a well, distraction. That's what Tim's been that's talking been about. Talking if about. the owner stops talking, if Mike stops talking, right. and just get down to the business of football, maybe things will be better. No guarantee. But we know that things haven't worked out the way they've done it. Yes. So, I think you made a, a really good point about the word culture. If you're winning, your culture's great. Winning right. is the best deodorant out there. And if you're losing, oh, we don't have leaders, we don't have culture. And I also feel like, Tim, so basically, there's no such thing as heat culture, right? <laughs> oh, yes. It, it, it's such thing as heat culture. <laughs> okay. but, but see, heat culture is about what we do on the court and about <laughs> what, how hard we work on the court and, what, and how it starts in August. Y'all can say what y'all want to say. It's just like what Tibbs is doing with New York. I respect Watch you wake up. Why she wake up? Oh, yeah, New York City. <laughs> <laughs> is Tim done talking about the heat culture? Hey, you know, I, I'm sorry, but it works. It doesn't? It, it does. does. It actually does. It actually does. It actually does. Yeah. 
I guess it does. It does. Means they are swimming in rings. <laughs> it does. I mean, they went to the bottom. Uh, I mean, I mean, you oh, can say what you want to say. You can say what you want to say. The heat say. culture, yeah, right on the Knicks. That's all. Heat culture does exist. That was y'all fault again. <laughs> 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 they was going to see it on video anyway. Do we uh, see that going back to that? <laughs> yes, no, we do. Okay. We're going Wait, forward yeah. to the next headline right. because we Thank had you. a very interesting basketball game last night. Yeah. The Boston Celtics had an 11-game win streak. Yes. They're in Cleveland. They're up by 22 points. And that guy, not Dwayne Wade, no. Dean Wade, yes. went on <laughs> fire in the fourth quarter. Woo-hoo. And they ended up beating the Celtics. Is this just one win? No big deal. They took their foot off the gas. Or is there a problem with Boston? No. This no, is, no, no. no. This Come is a re- regular season. Yeah. Right. NBA game with the Boston Celtics, if I'm not mistaken, have, what, a seven-and-a-half game lead right now yes. Yes. over the Milwaukee Bucks and the best record in all of basketball. And they are the best team right now in all of basketball. And certainly in the East, no one's going to challenge them as of right now uh, in a seven-game series. So, yeah, did they blow a 22-point lead in the fourth yes. quarter? Yeah. Yes. Does yes. that suck if you're a Celtic fan? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Does it mean anything for the Cavs? Not no. really. No. And at the end of the day, throw well, it without, in the garbage and well, move on. Well, without Donovan Mitchell, it and was Max big. Strauss was up. It was yeah, real D-Wade. big. But D-Wade, you know what he did? He came in. He played his game. It wasn't no D-Wade? pressure on him. He came in and just shot the ball. Are we yeah, he, really he, going? He, name hey, starts hey, with a D. Man, this dude <laughs> came in and played yeah. great basketball. He shot D-Wade? the ball with a lot of confidence. <laughs> uh, the new D-Wade, number 32 for the Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> there you go. So, wait, there you I got go. a question for you, Tim. Tim, yes. here's my question for you. I looked, at, I, looked, I looked at this loss. I looked at the Celtics' schedule. Mm-hmm. And I said, what happens next to them? They get on a plane and they go to Denver. And right. a game against the Nuggets okay. tomorrow. Right. Does that factor in? You're up. You're, you're winning big events, Cleveland Cavaliers. Oh. You start looking at the plane they, ride, looking at the matchup to Denver, forget about what's happening in front of you. They totally, totally took their feet off the paddle and said, look, let's get ready to go to Denver tomorrow or tonight or tomorrow and or today, and, and let's get ready to play Denver in a big game on Thursday on TV. And what happened to them happens to a lot of teams. We up against Cleveland. Well, we just beat. Wait, we just yeah. beat Golden State by fifty. Uh-huh. Right, you right. You know, and so they feeling real. We got eleven game win streak. No Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. And then in the fourth quarter, they just took their feet off the pedal, and and then the Cavaliers just made one thing. Shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to throw off? The best part about D, <laughs> the white D Wade <laughs> last night is after he made one of those uh, shots, I don't know the dunk or the outside shot, you'll see the highlight coming up here. He went to the six shooters. Yeah. Watch, oh, yeah. watch this. Yeah. Signature watch move. this. Little th- three-point shot. Come back. Oh. Yeah. Put him in the holster. Yeah. He was hot. He was hot. He was, he was hot. on fire. He, he was, was six for nine from the three. <laughs> yeah. was six for nine. Like, dude, 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 he had dude, 23, 23 points. Put him in the holster. Scorer. He had 23 points. I put those back in the holster. Hey, man. He would have 23 points in the next week and a half combined. <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> why, that's why he was doing that. This was his moment. <laughs> this go. was his moment. You got, and you got to take you advantage. You got some balls. You have, no, no, you don't. When you're on fire, you got to take advantage of yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. All right. I'm your Huckleberry. Barry. <laughs> Bang! Gotta come when we talking to D Wade. <laughs> you don't like it? Hey. Oh, it's so stupid. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Great, great right. day for him. I'm happy for him. I'm glad you're happy. Yeah, no, great kid. Let's no, give him the Austin Reeves contract. All right. He is, <laughs> why, why Austin Reeves? He's uh, why Austin Reeves. He's, he's, in, he's, in, well, he's in the NBA because he deserves to be in the I didn't say he doesn't deserve to be there. Yeah, well, you can't kind of, kind of go in there. He'll be able to tell his grandkids, Dad, Grandpa scored 28 in a game against the NBA champions. Yeah. All the oh, hey. <laughs> oh. They're not champions yet. Not They're going to be. They're, They're going to be. Uh, it's only yeah. okay. Unless the Knicks beat them. I mean, I'm saying you're talking about Knicks. Unless the Knicks beat them in Knicks seven weeks. Right, right now? Right. That's what you thought last year, that the Boston was going to be champions. I did. I yeah. did. See? I did. See? I did. And then all of a sudden he came Jimmy Butler. And then yeah. he culture he culture. got away. He culture got away. Yeah. Yeah. I can't argue that. They did go to the finals last year. And then they got waxed. Uh, in any event, there's big NFL news that many of you don't want to hear, but I do, and that is that a certain quarterback, albeit on a conspiracy theory podcast, we can't book him we on the show, about him, but some but guy named Billy heat culture. in his mom's basement <laughs> somehow booked that in Rogers. Uh, I think the headline was 9-11 didn't happen, just I've ask never Aaron. Seen a baby oh, but in, a, in any event, uh, the earth is flat. Uh, and he's Dinosaur coming back exists. for another decade of football in New York. <laughs> We're going to do it next. All right. Hey, 
a little the subway meat. action. Oh. Not only do they slice their meats fresh, they got what we call here the carton. That's the foot long, Timmy. Is that oh, right? That's yeah. right. You that's sure? right. Um, well, uh, um, uh, yes. <laughs> not, yeah. not after a cold swim, but uh, this morning <laughs> I felt pretty good about it. Anyhow, go to uh, Subway and get your foot long. My favorite's the pretzel. Uh, we appreciate Subway's sponsorship of this show. I also appreciate, as a diehard Jet fan, my main man, Aaron Rodgers. And let's be straight about it. My short-term future is tied directly to Aaron Rodgers. And they're running it back this year. And here's Aaron yesterday on a podcast. Really been in a good place rehab-wise. Hopeful I can play two. Yeah. Three. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Four more years. But you need to have some good fortune there, too. Both health-wise and, obviously, team-wise. And one thing the Jets have rarely had in our 60-year history is good luck yeah. and good, <laughs> and good <laughs> fortune. But it's the mindset I like. Why? Because... A lot of people are questioning, you know, how did Robert Sala survive this past year? It's a fair question. Mm. How did Joe Douglas, the GM, survive this past year? Good question. How did Nathaniel Hackett, after one bad year of offensive coordinating for the Jets, survive? And it's all based on that guy. Because that guy, whether we like him, whether we agree with his views or not, that guy is still special. That guy is still, when he's on a football field, as good or better than any quarterback in the NFL, period, stop. So the fact that his mindset is, I feel good. You know, one of the upsides of not playing a year of football, and there's not a lot of them, is that your body doesn't take the beating. So at 39 years old, you're not coming off a year where you, you know, got sacked 30 times, had your concussion, you know, you're trying to fix this part of your body and that part of your body. There is an upside to that at a certain point. But for me as a Jet fan, understanding that the only way I'm winning football games over the next couple years is for that guy to be on the field and healthy, the fact that he's thinking that way, it may not mean anything at the end of the day, but it makes Jet fans feel a little sense of hope, like the window opened up a little crack for us to sneak on it. <laughs> yeah, Jets fans, are only they only care about Aaron Rodgers if he's bringing home W's. And of pop, course, and that's right. But at the end of the day, you also talk about, well, see, what's the difference between him and Kirk Cousins? Kirk Cousins is a pocket quarterback, right, who tore his Achilles, who you know wherever he lands, he's not going to be scrambling all over the place. So you're not too worried about the Achilles. Aaron Rodgers' game is different. He extends mm-hmm. plays with his legs. He scrambles. He does a lot of things off the off platform. So if now you're talking about bringing a 40-year-old quarterback with a torn Achilles, potentially trying to stay healthy and play multiple years, it almost sounds like he's trying to buy time. Like, hey, next year, next year, as much as you want me back, I may not be that guy. I may need multiple years to get back to where we need to, where you want us to be. I uh, guess hopefully a Super Bowl. The ultimate question, though, for the Jets is going to be, look, if he gets hurt and he's out, it's a wrap. Yeah. Season's over. And even if you have a competent backup quarterback, I mean, could you win nine, ten games? I guess in theory you sure. could. We yeah. saw the Cleveland Browns make the playoffs. I know you love him, but with Joe Flacco, right? And he was their fourth quarterback. So you can yeah. still make the playoffs if you have a legitimate, competent backup. Obviously, if you get to that stage, there's going to be panic in the streets. I'm going to lead the panic <laughs> like the Pied Piper. I promise you that. But the question is this. If Aaron Rodgers plays all 17, yeah. Is it wrong of me to dream <laughs> the impossible dream <laughs> to walk the impossible walk to dream of a Super Bowl win? Is that crazy talk for I me or not? I just want you to get the carton out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I care about. I know we support so <laughs> but uh, Like, is that – look, the AFC is a gauntlet. You got all the great quarterbacks. Backs there. Yeah. But when you look at the AFCs, you know, Miami has not won a single playoff game with Mike McDaniel or Tua. They've gotten to the playoffs. They haven't won a playoff game. Correct. Josh Allen just lost Gabe Davis, and that was kind of a hit or miss team this past year. What? There were moments where they looked awesome. There were moments where you're <laughs> like, they're not going to make the playoffs, right? True. And New England's a poop show, and they're going to have a rookie quarterback, so they're out of the mix. Is it crazy for me to think, and I, I know I'm talking with my fandom here, that if Aaron Rodgers plays all 17 and is healthy throughout, that the New York Jets are good enough. Let's just start with 
win the division. Oh, I, is that I, crazy? This is not crazy at all. They have the top no, five, they have top five it's defense. They have an absolute stud in the, as a running back. They have a great wide receiver. They're going to add another wide receiver. Yep. They've got a tight end, Conklin, who's great. Like, they have – all of the pieces. They were missing a quarterback and a yep. competent offensive coordinator. Yep. That's what they were missing. Now they and, they and cut CJ Zoma yesterday. Yep. So they opened up a few more million bucks yeah. to you know, acquire guys. But I just I don't think I'm being crazy just to put out there if number eight is healthy, there's no reason why we can't win the division. Let me let me say this. Talk about it. He's going to be forty years old. That's what they say. Coming <laughs> off an Achilles. Andrew. Again, that's what they say. Yeah. All right. It's not going to happen. Say how you are. Next it's not going, I'm, I'm just going to be realistic. I'm just going to be realistic Negative. with you. I'm just going to try to help you all out to understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to take this man time I know. to get acclimated and get his rhythm back. But to it ain't basketball. Football. I would agree uh, with it, you. It's hey, basketball. He, he, still got, he got to run and stop. Run and stop. Move this way. Move that way. When a, when a tackle is coming at you, a 350-pound guy is coming at you, yeah. and you're trying to turn and run, yeah. That's different. Or you do what I do. Lay down and go, mama, mama. <laughs> it's different. But that's me. I mean, I mean it's, it's still the same. He's still moving the same way. I, so, I, so, I'm going to dream. So, I'm going to dream. I, I, don't dream too well, I wanna, hard. I want to say this. Don't dream too a hard. A lot of his future success depends on what the Jets, how they treat him and what they allow him to do. He can't be the general manager no more. Dream. The, okay. the no, impossible no, dream. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate what is it. going on? I hate it so much. What is oh, going yeah. on? The here? impossible right. size. Come on. I'm sorry, America. <laughs> I'm sorry you have to Woo! deal with this. This is going to be the greatest offseason of my life. Hopefully. I can't wait. Aaron Rodgers is coming I back. I thought it was last year. Uh, it was. This one's going to be better. <laughs> okay. This will be better than last year. All right, time now for everyone's favorite yeah! Wednesday morning segment. What's it called? What, what the, the- Wednesday. There we go. Let's just start off in New York Let's and the New York Giants. They've got this whole world town at Saquon Barkley. 60% of their offense since he became a New York Giant. And they let him walk out the door for nothing in return. Now, yes, I know. In theory, they could agree to a contract with him at any point they want. Now, he's an unrestricted free agent. But if they knew they weren't going to franchise him, if they knew they couldn't get a deal done, why not trade him? last year at the trade deadline and at least get something of value in return. Hey, New York Giants! What the <laughs> You know, they weren't going to trade coming off a playoff uh, appearance. At the end of the day, you had to believe with Daniel, a healthy Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, and a new team that this team was going to perform better. They did. They it, did it not. Was, it was absolutely atrocious. So, with that said, send him along his way. He's fine. He's and, cool. by the way, Xavier McKinney, arguably their best or one of their top two or three defensive Let players, the is their happen, starting yeah. safety for the Giants. He didn't get franchised either. Bye-bye. Earmuffs, Jeff Fent, the Giants fans. This is a rebuild. You it said sounds earlier, like this it. is a rebuild. Yeah. This is what they are doing. Because think about it. They're not committed to Daniel Jones. They let Saquon, in theory, if he wants to walk yeah. out the door. They're going to let Xavier McKinney walk out the door. Their head coach is in battle this a little bit rebuild. now because of the fight on the sideline and losing Wink Martindale and the issues is Mike Kafka on the same page and all that nonsense. This is a bad spot. A bad spot for Big Blue, and I love it because <laughs> I'm a Jeff. All right, number two real quick. Uh, NBA, your guy, you guys all love him, I don't. LeBron James. LeBron! LeBron. When, when he, uh, as you know, scored his 40,000th point, which is big whoop to do. Um, oh, okay. He tried to invoke the uh, the image and the historical reference of the great Will Chamberlain. Show with that. Holding Good up the him. white piece of paper right there. Go full screen real quick on that, guys. Sorry if you don't for mind. celebrating. Uh, 40,000 points. Uh, the problem with that is, is he also made up a sign for 40,001. Oh, yeah, well. And he made up a sign for 40,002. Oh, no. And, and he made up a sign for 40,003. And he made up a sign for 40,004. And he made a sign for 40,005. Yeah, no. And no. six and seven. Sure. <laughs> no, no, no. And nine. No. Hey, LeBron James. What, what the? F- yeah, Timmy Gunn. Real- Stop that. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, that's for gays. That is for gays. Oh. Oh. Hey, you know, don't do that to LeBron. He, he 40,000 points is a milestone. Yeah. And so is 40,006. 
To be fair, it's going to be four. It might be 41,000. It might be. But you know what's in Korea is over with. Anyhow, of course. we had a little but fun with that. Yeah. To be fair, we did of Photoshop course. some of those. Um, you did? Just, 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 just some of that to the just audience. Some just some of them. guys. That's some of As a journalist, you have to say that. Yeah, yeah. You took that seriously. You can leave it alone. I don't mind it. All right. Let's go to uh, number three. Look, if any of you have siblings, you have those sibling rivalries, oh, yeah. especially your brothers. Yep. Uh, get into it. I'm sure you and your brother had some tussles All the time. You know, back in the day. Uh, how about this New York Mets spring training game? There's an older brother and a younger brother going at it. Oof. And the younger brother's got the oh, ball. Oh, the ball. Oh, what is that? The ball. How about the cheap shot when little man's not looking mm -hmm. and the older brother goes two full hands? Oh, over the oh, goes. And then I oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It feels character, Craig. That's how it feels. Here's the good thing about the little That's guy. Silly. The little guy's That's tough. He's kept coming. coming. He ain't crying. Oh. Oh. Yeah. There you go. So I'll say this. Hey, older brother. Yeah. What the f yeah. No, um, no, no. That not? shows character. That yeah. you know, gets him tough. Yeah. Gets him ready. As but a when, he, brother, when, as a when, brother when I'm not going to be there, you know, you got to get ready for when I'm not going to be there. You got to know right. how to take care of yourself. I agree with right. Tim. Who I did that for you growing up? Nobody, because I was the <laughs> older brother. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but the my streets dad, of Chicago. The streets of Chicago. Right? But my dad. He, he helped me to get ready for Chicago. He did. Tough yes. love? Yeah. Tough love. Did your dad play ball at all? Or yes. No? Played ground legend in Chicago. Legend. Oh, See okay. that? The Thank Hardaway that. family. That's legendary oh, stuff yes. in Chicago. Yes. Uh, all right. Not so much in the Bronx, though. All what right. Now, <laughs> let me uh, go back to the NBA if I can. Uh, for those of you who have kids and you all sit there watching your son, we all have daughters, we've done a play youth basketball. How about your kid's about to go in for an uncontested layup? You got the camcorder of the phone ready to go. I got Junior. He's going to score his first points as a youth basketball player. And then from nowhere, here comes the referee to say, not on my watch. Oh! <laughs> No, he did not. <laughs> yes, he did. No, he did, he did not. Whoop. Wow. I mean, that was a LeBron type. Oh, one. wow. <laughs> Why did he do that? <laughs> no. And no. Hell, he's a black rep, too. Like, that just really oh, like, wow. That just, you know what? He must have been feeling his inner yeah. LeBron and yeah. wanted, you know, this is my only chance yeah. I can do this. I, yeah. so I got to go And that's forward. a nice gym, so they're in the yeah, suburbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, know what? you know what? Could a kid have been going to the wrong basket and he <laughs> no, wanted to be no, like, I'm just no. trying now, to help the rim. To be fair, out. the kid does travel. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean it's, he took a bus to the rim. You know, the only thing that makes sense is that he already blew the whistle. It's a dead ball. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, yeah. Kid took nine steps on well, the layup. Know. That's allowed the idea. Hey, wow. uh, youth basketball referee. What the? This is why parents should never heckle the refs. You get out. That's right. Yeah, you like, Son, you did take nine steps. But, Daddy, I saw LeBron do it. <laughs> yes. And we got, we got one more. Don't put it up on the screen just yet. Uh, this was a, to be fair, and just if I can be serious, here just for one very quick second, uh, a terrifying photograph that has caused me uh, sleepless nights. Um, and it's emotional for Are me. Okay. Uh, I'm not. So I saw this picture two days ago. I've not slept well since. And I'll just say in advance, to the guy that took the photo, what the f Show the photo. Oh! <laughs> That's me in Orlando. That's me in Orlando. Go full screen on that real quick. That's me in Orlando. <laughs> Listen. It, it's uh, the smile, Jacoby. Is that, I don't think it's, it's the, the smile. It's yeah. the yeah. serial killer yeah, smile. Look, yeah, look at that smile. <laughs> look at that smile. Wow. No, that was yeah. really good to take it You know how, like, back in the day, you go to Red Lobster and pick out your lobster? Yeah. <laughs> it looks like you're about to eat the koala, bro. <laughs> Like, this looks <laughs> like yeah, this koala is about to die. So that's a, right. they, at the zoo, they take the photos, you know what I mean? So it's not like, yeah. it's like I picked that one for my friend's role. Yeah. And I was like, the guy who picked that photo and printed it out and put it in the thing, they're, they're playing with me. No, they're not ah, playing, they're with, playing with me. They went yeah. playing with you. Yeah, that's I how you just, smile. He's yeah. like licking his lips like, yeah, okay, yeah, koala. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm about to eat you. I can't, yeah. tell, <laughs> exactly. I can't tell if it's a commercial for holding a koala or doing crystal meth. Either all works. Oh, there it goes. Right on Oh, come on. Get my. Oh, wow. Orlando. Wow. Oh that's it's troubling. And that's, not, that. and that's not AI generated. It is, that's, that's that bothered me. Yeah. That's, that's a, a real, real photo. Yeah. 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 We saw my family saw that the other night. We we're like, uh oh. Oh, I saw it when he posted. I texted him immediately. I'm like, <laughs> are you okay? You need what? help. Blink if you need help, bro. Like, what the hell is going on? I so, and we could say it all together. Hey, Jacoby. What? what?
There you no go. All right, we got much more uh, coming your way. Tons of football, Micah Parsons and the Dallas Cowboys. An interesting decision by the Dallas Cowboys with Micah's fifth year option and their attempt to potentially oh. save some money. <laughs> Yahtzee. Right there, Willie. <laughs> I think we call that a, we call that a facial. Right yeah. There. there you go. All right, much more coming up right Jeez. after this. You have to look down at me. Uh, just show of hands. Do you want a story about the Kelsey brothers, or are we all tired of the Kelsey? No, you brothers? love it. You love I can't. It. I, I'm sick of it. What are you right? talking about? I do. I want Kelsey. Kelsey. If we gonna Kelsey, talk about LeBron, we got to talk about the Kelsey brothers. Kelsey, Kelsey, I you want to break the tie there? All right, they tell me I got to go to it. Oh, great, look at this. Jason and Travis Kelsey like to chug beers. Oh, make sure we put that on television. Awesome. <laughs> Let me uh, make sure people talk about me seven days a week. Oh, look, I've got a beer. Oh, look, my brother's negotiating with Fox. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah, let's stand up and pretend like we're Cavs fans. All right. Yeah, here very we go. Foamy, chug it. You chug beers. it. I chug it. Okay, great. Look at us chugging beer. Woohoo! Okay. So you're saying, so you saying they're not Cavs oh, fans? Yes. I'm so sick of the Kelsey family. Right oh, now. really? I'm sorry. It's enough. It's wow. just enough. For 10, years, this is like time. Wow. For 10 years, he's a nondescript offensive lineman. All wow. of a sudden, his brother starts dating Taylor Swift, and now he's the yo, uh, so yeah, now everyone's you know favorite guest. How guests. we feel about Aaron Rodgers? Love Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> that, 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 I'm talking about how we feel. About oh, how you guys feel about Aaron Rodgers? I got you. Fair enough. Yes. Oh, and speaking of uh, entertainment at a basketball game, one guy I do love, an old buddy of mine, the greatest competitive eater of all time, Joey Chestnut. Oh. He of course wins the Nathan's Hot Dog thing every year. Oh God! He went head to head against a group of people <laughs> in a pierogi. Eating contest. If you're not sure what a pierogi is, imagine ravioli with potatoes on the inside. inside carbs, with carbs on the inside. And Joey Chestnut, this is the same game that the Kelsey's were chugging beer at, took down 39 pierogies. How's he so wow. skinny? And beat a collection of men all trying to go oh. against him. There he is, oh. the greatest competitive eater of all time, the great, the legendary, Joey Chestnut. How many progress you, you could polish wow. off in 10 minutes? He did 39? Yeah. I can probably do 20. I think it was two minutes. Oh, all right. I think it was, 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 was way less than 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, it was two minutes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I didn't get that part. He yeah. ate 39 in two minutes. 39. I don't know if it was two minutes, but it was way less It was than not 10. a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably not 10 minutes. Oh, wow. That that's that. Anyhow, he okay. is the greatest competitive eater of all time. But I went to a dim sum place yesterday and I tried and I failed. Here's Jacoby <laughs> now with a little first in football. First in football, the Cowboys have designated Micah Parsons as a defensive end. Significant? Not really. However, if he was designated as a linebacker, his fifth year option would be $3 million more. He's expected to get a new deal, so this won't actually happen. Right. But, Craig, what does it tell you about the Cowboys organization? It's and stupid. His it's dumb. Look, now, at the end of the day, there's a, there's a committee in the NFL in a coordination with the Players Association that ultimately decides which position you are going to be viewed yep. at. And that goes back to the Jimmy Graham days when he wanted to be viewed as a wide receiver, not a tight end, because there's a significant uh, difference in money. So that's where this all emanates from. About 10 years ago, the great tight end Jimmy Graham, who's actually still in the NFL. That yes, being said, yes. if we all accept, and I think we do, and I'm sure the Cowboys do, that there's no possible way that he is ever going to play on the fifth-year option without first signing, obviously, a huge mega contract extension. If we agree to that, then why go through this exercise of trying to save $3 million two years from now? This doesn't help the cap this year. This doesn't help the cap next year. This would be if he plays on the fifth-year option, which he's not going to, then we could save $3 million because we uh, designated him a defensive end and not a linebacker. They're going to win that, by the way, yeah. because 88% yeah. of, the, of the plays and snaps he's played under recently, he played as a defensive end. Correct. So there's no arguing that the Cowboys are in the right on this from a standpoint of designation. But for me, why would you go through this publicly now? They had to pick up the option from a negotiating standpoint because it gives them a full another year, year and a half to actually get the long-term contract done without worrying about a guy becoming an unrestricted free agent and leaving. So, yes, they had to pick up the option. Everyone knows that. But why would you go out of your way to designate him at a position when the optics are 
Cowboys looking to save money by designating Micah Parsons as defensive end. Now, I'll be fair about this. Had they designated him a linebacker, they would have lost. He would have been redesignated as a defensive end. Yeah. But when we talk about optics and we talk about an 82-year-old owner saying, I'm all in, this does not smell of being all in. This smells of, can we save three million bucks if he ever played in that option? And the reality, he will never step on a field as a Dallas Cowboy, as a lame duck player on that fifth year option. He will hold out before that ever happens. I mean, you're right. But at the end of the day, even on the, underneath Mike Zimmer's defense, he's still going to be a DN. Like, it, it is what it is. But from a $3 million standpoint, you got to talk about some of the holes they have to fill. What's going on with this linebacker room that's shattered? What's going on with the <laughs> defensive line that needs to beef up? So, Jerry needs the money to make moves. And hopefully, he can do some, he can do some Remember, damage. Remember, this agents. doesn't save him a nickel. It doesn't. It's $3 million bucks two years from now, and he's never going to accept it. He's never going to put on shoulder pads and a helmet and walk on the field in September, October, November, December, January. And they never play in February, so it's not an issue. You, uh, <laughs> under the fifth year option. It's a non starter. And this is why I go back to this. Diehard Dallas Cowboy fans are done with Jerry Jones. Now, doesn't matter. He, if he doesn't want to sell the team, he doesn't sell the team. He owns the Dallas Cowboys, right? And he'll probably hand it off to Stephen Jones and yeah. the rest of his family. But this is why, when I said an hour ago, that my gut tells me that diehard Cowboy fans are done with Jerry Jones. They don't believe in Jerry Jones anymore, and it's because of things like this. Well, they need a splash They need a splash pickup, like a Chris Jones or something to say, all yes. right, this is what yeah, all in Yeah, show me you're all in. Yeah. Because telling me that two years from now, I want to save three million bucks, does not equate to being all in, ever. I'm sorry. What they should have come out and said was, we're going to designate him at linebacker, and it doesn't matter because we're going to make him the highest paid defensive player in the game when that comes up a year from now. So trust us, Dallas Cowboy fans. Mike is not going anywhere. No. And we're going to make him generationally wealthy. That's how you tell a fan base we're all in. You know, pussyfooting around with a contract two years from now does not evoke confidence in a fan base, which is why, again, I love Jerry Jones. He is my favorite owner in the history of the NFL. Cowboy fans are done with him. Well, I don't disagree. If you read the comments or anything about the Cowboys, a lot of fans are saying this is the yakety yak, the same old Jerry Jones. Why don't we take a look at some of the comments, Willie Colombo? What do we got? Show me a couple of random comments we may have found on X, aka Twitter. Craigie's the best. Craigie's right. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Dallas fans are tired of Jerry, uh, and on and on and on. So, I mean, that's the rhetoric out there. I'm not a dire Cowboy fan, obviously. It sounds like you may be. But I respect and I can relate to Cowboy fans saying, Yo, know, for all the blowhard stuff, for you know, being on the radio every week, for you know, you know, telling the world I signed Trey Lance because I got that kind of power, I pick up the phone and get deals done, yep. all well and good. It's been 30 years, 30 years. And consider this, just so you have the optics right. The New York Jets have been in more championship games by a lot than the Dallas Cowboys have in the last 30 years. Yeah. So smoke that for a little bit and get back to me about how much Cowboy fans love Jerry Jones. Moving on to second and football, Debo Samuel offered some very interesting and intelligent perspective when asked about championship opportunities and football teams, and specifically the 49ers. Here he is. All right. Let's use this motivation when you get back in the lab just to yeah. put yourself in a position and try to do your best to you know, get back because people just say, you know, it's always the next year. But I heard that in 2019 and it took four more years to get where we at. So, I mean, it's not that easy as people think to get to the Super Bowl. And, you know, it takes everything. So just just sort of like how fragile is the 49ers Super Bowl contention window? I don't know if fragile is the right word, but I like what Debo's saying there because you can't just take for granted because we're bringing back all of our big-name pieces this yeah. year and we're clearly the best team on paper in the NFC that we're just going to waltz right into another Super Bowl. Look, they're the best team. All right, so the pressure's on them to, to act like the best team and deliver like the best team. And we know what injuries can do to you because two years ago they were right knocking on the door and, of course, they lose Brock Purdy against Philadelphia. 
Also, you have to remember that although the regular season was a huge win for them and the number one seed, they damn near lost to the Green Bay Packers mm -hmm. on that Saturday night. And obviously, if Jordan Love doesn't throw that pick, who knows what happens on that Packer drive at the end of the game. They're down 17 nothing to the Detroit Lions, yep. right, and come all the way back to win that game. So it's not easy to get there. Like, we look at Kansas City, like, oh, Kansas City, it's pretty easy for them. It's not. And I love the fact that arguably the most important player on that offense in San Francisco is saying, I don't take it for granted because there's no guarantee I get back. That's the right mindset. If you guys want to talk to me about culture yeah. in the locker room, it matters, Craig. which is an overused term that guys rely on but and they matters. shouldn't, okay, sure. That's you can't culture. scoff at it. You've never spent time in a locker room, nor whoa, had a practice, whoa. or like that. Whoa! Whoa. Like, really? like, this is what makes me mad. Like he there talked to you about the, the like being on time, being accountable, being the first guy in the building, the last guy out. Uh -huh. Practice is hard, preparing. Uh -huh. All that matters. The problem with this whole statement and this whole Super Bowl situation, the one person we're not holding accountable is Kyle Shanahan, right? Because you've been here multiple times and have yet to deliver with a grade A offense, and this is your offense. Then yeah. this is your outfit. Yeah. So if there's any pressure or window. To to be closed or be happened, and it starts with Kyle Shanahan. Because at this point, if I'm George Lynch and then the rest of the, uh, you know, I forgot the John order. Lynch, yep. Yeah, John Lynch. It, it, you have to understand, time after time, we bank on you getting there and you yeah. haven't delivered. We're at one point we look for another answer. Now that you have Brock Purdy yeah. emerging into well, the and I'd contract. make the argument if the right guard decides to block Chris Jones, Brock oh, okay. Purdy throws a game when he touchdown pass in the yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. So you're right, at some point, you got to win. Yeah. All right. It's not going to be good enough, you know, to be a bridesmaid every single time. And I just want to react to something you said there please. because it was personal. Please. Oh, it's please. personal. Oh. It's personal. Yeah. Wow. The notion of you've never been in a locker room. What? You don't know what it's locker like. Room you've ever spent time in. As a player, As not. a player. As that's a player, what we're talking about. Okay, so still, that's, 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 that's what we're talking about. You lost a bunch of grown that's men and towels about. and you hold a right. tape recorder. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah, that, that, like, that doesn't mean that you was in a locker room. That doesn't mean that you was in a locker room. Okay. As a professional player, no. As a reporter, of course, I've right, lived okay. in locker rooms. That's different. But you're discounting the 1985 Yeshiva Championship. Yes. Where me and Shlomo Goldberg <laughs> yeah. took it to the rack. Okay. In going 17-0 and and winning a championship. Where was this at? L.A. Fitness? <laughs> No. No. YMCA. Yeah, YMCA. That's yeah. even worse. <laughs> but they went. They, they window yeah. is definitely closing, though. San Fran's? I don't about? think it is, actually. I think JCC? He, he, oh, yeah. My, <laughs> my Jewish basketball window is long shut. Yeah. Trust me on that. I know we got to take a break. I just real quick on San Francisco. There's no one else close right now in the NFC. But they went to a still close. Agree with that. Yeah. Well, we yeah, can discuss they, it more. Agree, like, we can discuss yeah, it more coming up. We you just watch two teams that almost got it. Yeah, Let's take a quick break. Off my man's head. Yeah. I'll explain to the guy. Why don't they learn the overtime rule? I want. I want the oh, there's another one. <laughs> yeah, good time to take a break. Saquon Barkley is a free agent. Where is he going to go next year? Maybe we'll find out after this. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the card show. Jacoby, what do you got? I got Saquon Barkley, and guess what? He is not going to be tagged by the Giants, meaning he is very, very unlikely to return to the Giants, meaning he is now a free agent. And strangely, there's already odds on where he could potentially end up. See, and Willie Colon, his newly adopted Houston Texans hey. are not just favorites for his services. They are favorites by a lot, a lot for his services. What does this tell you about your Texans? One well, shout out to Twin Peaks. Had a great time in Houston going to Twin Peaks. Treasures. Love Twin Peaks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, listen, it, it makes sense for Houston. They have money to spend. They have a great, a solid offensive line that they're also going to add to. They have a defense, and now you have an elite quarterback in C.J. Stroud. One thing you add stability and balance to the offense is having a great running back who not can only run between the tackles, who can also catch. So, yeah. It makes sense for Saquon. You're going to get the money. You're going to play on, uh, to me, a contender, especially within that division. I think it's a home run hit. But there's two teams that we cannot leave out. And I said this earlier in the show. Don't leave out the Green Bay Packers, right? Because at the oh. end of the day, the Packers have a big offensive line. They have a young quarterback in Jordan Love. They huh. need a running back to pair with Aaron Jones, who is injury prone, just like Saquon at times. But a pairing makes for a good backfield. And also, don't forget about the Bears. Because if they get a young quarterback, you need a good, solid running back to back them up. And they also have that Saquon Barkley, if they were to add him. Look, I see the Texans, the Chargers, who we talked about last yeah. week. Uh, <clears throat> now that Austin Eckler's gone uh, from there. And Jim Harbaugh said that makes some sense. But I would just say this. 
Let's not sleep just yet on him staying right here. All right, because he does have a great relationship with the owner, John Mara, of the New York Giants and the Tisch family. And while he might be ticked off at Joe Shane, I would be if I was him, yep. and he might not believe in Brian Dable anymore because maybe he's been sold a bill of goods about their desire to keep him around, his relationship with the <laughs> owner is fan. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 oh. We gotta get to look the, at the lights. Look at the lights. You should have the Miami time. Heat. You got the time. It is, <laughs> it is 9 o'clock. For those of you that are new to the show at 9 o'clock, no matter what we're doing, we got to go to the biggest five things you need to know in the world of sports. It's 5 at 9. Wow. So let's stay with Saquon Barkley. <laughs> All right? And let's say this. While Saquon Barkley might be a Texan, might be a Cowboy, might be a Charger, might be an Eagle, might come back to New York, yeah, who right. the hell knows? There's one thing we can all agree on. Number five, Saquon Barkley, a big disappointment. Come on, Chris. Oh, as the New York Giants. Stop it. Saquon Barkley, there you see the Giants record with him as a New York Giant. Mm. A single playoff win. Well, that's not his fault. And how many years did the New York Giants lose 10 games or more? Five. Yeah. How many games has Saquon missed? 25. 25. So for a guy that I love, and I love watching him play, and I was jealous Good that the New York Giants got him. Not a great golfer, oh, man. for sure. But Saquon Barkley, as the number two overall pick by the New York Giants, a bit of a disappointment. You call him the bus, Craig. A bit of a disappointment. Injury prone, yes. I still think he has a lot of tread on the tires. Can he land to an outfit like the Texans, who is a playoff team with a young quarterback? A bit of a he could be a difference. So, I love Saquon Barkley. Bad of a listen, disappointment. It, 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 it doesn't look doesn't, like it. It doesn't make him a bad person. No, it does not. It, it doesn't make him a bad running back. No, it True. does not. But he's been a disappointment. I think that's fair to say. It, it, it but when you say do, disappointment, it has yeah. to do with injury, and it has to do with the offensive line, it has to do with the offense, but it has to do with the franchise. But if you pick someone number two, you remember, expect them to take it to a better record than 34, 64, and 1. I remember this. With the when, line that you have. When Dave Thanks. Gettleman with the and line the New York have, Giants drafted him, Tim Hardaway, Dave Gettleman came out and said he has been touched by the hand of God. <laughs> Let's go to number four. 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 Number four. The final month of the NBA season, especially out west, is going to be a sprint to the finish line. No joke. Yes. We got five weeks left. Yes. And here's the interesting thing. The top four teams out west are separated by all of two games yes. in the lost column. And the bottom six teams in the Western Conference are separated by three games. Meaning, over the last five weeks of the regular season, one can go to five, ten can go to six, and there's going to be a lot of jockeying for position before we get to the playing tournament, Timmy. No question. You got to get your team ready to play starting right now. After the All-Star break, they got to come out and start playing and start winning games. The Lakers, I don't I, – if they're going to be in a playing game. The Warriors going to be in a playing game. Now, the other teams, they just jockey in for position one, two, three, what, 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 what position they going to be in. But I guarantee you that the Warriors and the Lakers are going to be in a playing if game. If you look at the standings again, right, Go one through four is where you're going to be the headline. That's where all the focus is going to be because it's the number one seed. But they're all hosting the first round game. That's not as important to me as the difference between eight and nine. Because if you're in that playing game, you lose one game. You have one bad night. No, you run done. into a hot shooter. Done. Your season's done. over. Done. So if you're the Mavericks, you got a half game lead over the Lakers. Right. And to me, the difference between eight and nine is bigger than any other two spots in the thing. Yeah. And all you need to do is look at last year, right? The Miami Heat lost to the Chicago Bulls, if they I remember that correctly. Right. 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 To the, the Hawks. To the Hawks. And Hawks. then they had to play Chicago. Right. If they were sitting there, you know, nine or ten, it's a wrap. They don't go to the Eastern Conference Finals exactly. or the NBA Finals, obviously, as Miami Heat did. Number three. What we got? Three. Here we Thanks, guys. Appreciate yeah. that. The wide receiver free agent market has shriveled up like a raisin. Oh, well, I was going to say something else. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> Gregor, <laughs> both up. I'll leave it at that. Meaning, if you're a diehard Kansas City Chiefs fan, you better get on the phone today and call Calvin Ridley up and get him signed. He is the perfect addition to the Kansas City Chiefs. And now that the market is drying up 
and Pittman Jr. got franchised by the Colts, and Mike Evans goes back to Tampa. Craig. There's not a lot of great wide receivers out there. There's one. His name is Calvin Ridley. Craig, I'm really shocked by this. What's that? Why aren't your Jets on this? Why haven't you said the Jets need to sign Calvin Ridley? Because sitting yeah, he could be a great compliment to Garrett Wilson. Because the New York Jets are going to bring in Odell Beckham. Oh, God. Yeah. So Odell Beckham yeah, to the Jets? Yeah, he'll be a Jet. He'll be a Jet. Oh, no. But Calvin Ridley's the for best. For real? Yeah, for Rizzle. Uh, Calvin Ridley's the best available wide receiver. And what does Kansas City need more than anybody? Wait, wait. A legitimate wide receiver. No, no, yeah. no, no. Go again. Did, 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 did the Kansas City Chiefs win it Super Bowl? With the wide receiver, can I that check on that now? Did yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl? With, 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 the, yeah, with, the, with, the, with, yeah. with the ones they have now, right? Yeah, that's right. So why do they need number one? Because you don't just go with the status quo, Tim Hardaway. When you, oh, you didn't win the title. Sorry. All right, oh, let's oh. go. What wow. you just left that on the table for? Him. Sorry, Timmy. That's let's okay. go to number two. I wasn't even close. <laughs> <laughs> that's honesty. All right, number two. There's some uh, talks in the NBA circles that Zion is willing to participate in a future dunk competition. Too late. But he wants to be incentivized. So, which one of these things is the best incentive for Zion to be in the dunk competition? Is it a date with a porn star? Ooh. Is it a relationship with an Instagram model? Mm. Is it a free pass to the Hong Kong buffet? Or is it a trade to the New York Knicks? Oh! oh. I think he's done all the first three, to be honest with you. Hey, I'm taking the Hong Kong Buffet. Yeah. yeah what do you too, mean? Too, by the way. <laughs> Hong Kong Buffet. And yeah, no joke, Zion said that he would consider being the all-star, uh, sorry, in the dunk competition. And to be fair to Zion, if he got elected to be in the all-star game, yeah. then he would also lend his considerable dunking talents to the dunk contest. So he's saying that, really, if he is going to the all-star Make game, me an all-star, I'll dunk. Well, first of all, he got to make himself an all-star. Well, he's he can't, yeah, he yeah. can't, what, close. He's having is, a good year. Close is only his hand grenades and, and horseshoes. horseshoes. Right. That's it. That's all. You got to put yourself in a position to be an all-star. He hasn't put himself in a position yet to be an all-star. He wants the fans to vote for him. Why am I voting for you when you're not out there producing the way I want you to produce or your team wants you to produce? And, and I'm not going to even go to the eating part because that's not even fair. I just want you to come in, be healthy, play the way you're supposed to play, and we, we just, if, we'll see if you're an all-star, if you put out all-star caliber. Yep. If you're not an all-star caliber, you're not going to be on an all-star team. So you, if you're not going to be in a dunk contest, well, just say I'm not going to be a dunker. Yep. I like the fact that he's willing to consider it, though. Yeah. I think, uh, he'll, I think I, he'll be an all-star. I think, I think he'll be an all-star I next think he'll be a hell of a dunker. No a doubt dunker. about it. Why? I would want to well, see why? him. Me too. Why would he go into the contest early in his career? Because he wants a time off. Well, listen, the Bahamas are fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Bahamas he wants are time fun. Off. Well, yeah. well, but there was a window where, like, he could have maximized well, well, being one of the you best dunkers. You, you got to also understand he has injuries, too. You know, his knee is not all the way the way it's supposed to be right now, 100%. Sure, sure. So he, he's waiting till he's 100%. And I think once he become all-star, he will be at that 100% mark, and he will be in the dunk contest, you guys which also, I would want to see. Go ahead. I would want to see. Oh, uh, yeah. You guys also know the Bahamian word for all-star break, right? What's that? Side piece. Oh, yeah. All right. Time now for Whoa. number one. one. The Dallas Cowboys are playing with fire and how they're handling the Micah Parsons fifth-year extension, looking for a $3 million discount in that fifth-year option. And if you have an owner who claims that he's all in, why in the world would you go out of your way to designate him at a position that saves you $3 million? That is not synonymous with being all in. There's trouble in Big D. Listen, he played 88% of his snaps at the DN position, right? So they call it a spade a spade. They're going to take care of him. It's just a matter of time. Will he sit out? Probably. At the end of the day, he makes hay when he's at the DN spade. He had 40 sacks in his career, 89 quarterback hits. He's not doing that at the linebacker position. Well, there's a good chance for us to take a break and do more on the Dallas Cowboys and the reality that Cowboy fans are now fed up with Jerry Jones. And it might be time for some new ownership Ooh. in Dallas, Texas. We'll walk you through to explain right after this. Good morning, everybody. Right. Right. Show. We have your early morning headlines. It starts with the NBA last night. 
The Celtics off of an 11 game winning streak. We're up at 22 <laughs> points in Cleveland against the Donovan Mitchell list Cavs and wait. Dean Wade outscored the Celtics in the fourth quarter, giving the Cavs the win. Craig, I'm going to make this small loss into a bigger thing. <laughs> Is there a problem with Boston and their personality and finishing games? There's a problem with D. Wade. <laughs> Dean <laughs> Wade. Yeah, Dean Wade. Dean Dean Wade. Dean but they're calling him D. Wade now. In well, Dean Wade. <laughs> well, it is D. Wade. I know. Yeah, I mean, yeah but now. you can't go. That, that's taken. You oh, can't, you can't, not necessarily. You can't go with D. Wade. Which is the Dean? better D. Wade? Yeah. Dwayne Wade or Dean Wade? Uh, Dwayne know. Wade, of course. <laughs> Come on now. Dwayne Wade. But Look, it's... Still it's a, it's a regrettable collapse, that's for sure. But it doesn't mean a damn thing. Uh, I give the Cavs credit after the Knicks abused them uh, in Cleveland without Donovan Mitchell. Right. Uh, they kind of gathered themselves late because they were being embarrassed again, albeit this time by a much better basketball team in the Boston Celtics. But you know, it also shows that there's guys that are not household names who have earned their way into the NBA, yes. like this guy, Dean Wade, yeah. uh, who's feeling himself he went to the six shooters, guys. Love the six hot. shooters. The dude went That's to the how six hot he shooters. Was. That's Watch how this. Hot you're, gonna see, you're gonna see coming up a top of the key Ugh. three. Uh -huh. He getting tipped back watch dunks. This, right? Ugh. There's a double dip. Hey, I dunk. think he should be in a dunk contest. Yeah, but watch this. Top <laughs> I, think of the key he, three. I, I see his leaps. Here it comes here. Here, here it comes. go right here. Money here we are. Net. Yes. Oh. Six shooters. Oh, give it yes. to him. Cool ball, D. Cool ball, D. Give it to him. Cool ball. Look at this vertical. Yeah. Hold on, he's 6'10". It Look doesn't matter. Vertical. It doesn't matter. If you can't dunk at 6'10". Oh, I, know some, I know some people that but can look, dunk at 6'10". Uh, uh, is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the deal. Uh, it's not a big deal. They have an eight-game lead, seven-and-a-half game lead uh, in the East. There's no one close to them uh, in the Eastern Conference. This is a team that was packing their bags, getting ready to get on the jet, to go out for the big game uh, tomorrow night again Damn. against uh, the Denver Nuggets. That's the marquee game this week. You know, the defending champs against the best team in basketball right now. Uh, and that's what happened. Yep. And in the NBA, which uh, notoriously we know is a league of streaks, there's no lead that's safe unless you're up 50 against Golden State, of course. That lead is safe. Yeah. And this is what the NBA is sometimes. If you fall asleep a little bit or get a little lazy or you stop guarding your man yep. you know, the way you should be, dudes can shoot. Yes. And D. Wade can shoot, apparently. Yeah, but also, Jason Tatum went one for eight, and they went cold behind the three-point line, which allowed the Kaylee. But up 22 in the fourth off a 50-point well, blowout win. I think Jacoby they, was right they, earlier. I'm going to tell you this. This is a team that was thinking about Denver. They're thinking about Boston, Denver. Boston Celtics was rolling that game. They was making yeah. threes, threes, threes in the first half. And then in the second half, they relied on all them threes again instead of going to the hole. And Dean Wade and the Cavaliers started getting their confidence level up and started making Cavs shots. Cavs joke, though. Uh, uh, oh, no. No, Cavs are no. a joke. They the Knicks not a own joke. them. They you know the Knicks joke. own them. Yeah, well, they can't handle New York. It, I'm going to tell you this. A team always own a team. Okay. No well, the Knicks what, own the Cavs. Okay, well, there you go. There you go. Okay. Meanwhile, and Miami owns the Knicks. Stop, don't even say that. Don't even, <laughs> it's true, but it's don't say it. It's kind of true, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, by the way, Tatum in the second half. Four points, one for 11 yeah. shooting. Yeah. There you go. We'll Sweet talk about that big game Thursday when it's time. But right now we move to our second headline. That involves Russell Wilson. Yesterday we heard that he would not be returning to the Broncos. Now he is the most sought after free agent because even he acknowledges he's playing for the vet minimum for his new team. He also said he's looking for a team that, quote, has a history of winning. He did not say Super Bowl contender. He said history of winning. Yeah. What does that tell you about where he will play next? Well, it tells me more about where he's not going to play. He's not playing for the Atlanta Falcons. He's not going to the there New York Giants. He's not going to a lot of the teams, if you want to see the list, of teams that obviously need starting quarterbacks. To me, the Steelers are the best option. If we're going to be true to our word, if Russell Wilson, who's going to have many options, obviously, to go to a lot of different teams, if the first thing he's looking for is a team that has a history of winning. And if you guys want to put up on the screen the teams that are most likely to have an interest in Russell Wilson, the Falcons don't have a history of winning. Patriots do. Now, the Giants have four Super Bowl wins, but they don't have a history of winning. They're the second worst team in the NFL over the last 10 years. Only our Jets are worse than them. Great job. The Buccaneers. <laughs> yeah, they've got a couple Super Bowl championships over a 25-year span. Brady. There's not a history of winning there. The Patriots don't have Brady and Belichick, so they're out. The Minnesota Vikings have never won a Super Bowl, Rebuild. so they're out. The Commanders are the laughing stock of the league, so they're out. And the Raiders like to talk about winning, but they never do. 
So what team, based on the criteria of, I want to go to a team that wins? It's the Pittsburgh Steelers. And when you start breaking down the reality of what team is set up the way Tampa was set up, now what, five years ago, four years ago, yes. for Tom Brady? Yep. You can make the argument, and should make the argument, mm -hmm. that Pittsburgh is set up above average defense. You've got legitimate wide receivers. You've got an above average running attack. And you've got a coach that commands respect from everybody in that locker room. Yep. Not named George Pickens, maybe. Okay? <laughs> Who was a problem, obviously, this past year. If he doesn't go to Pittsburgh, then he's not going to a team that's got a history of winning that gives him a chance to compete in the postseason. The caveat to that, and I don't know Russell Wilson, I've never met him. I'm not sure how much personal vendettas play a role in where he decides to go. Sean Payton embarrassed him. Yes. Sean Payton humiliated him. Sean Payton made him the root cause of everything wrong in Denver with the Broncos. For me, as a competitive guy that hates to lose, that does not want to be embarrassed or humiliated because I've earned the right for you not to treat me the way Sean Payton treated him on the sideline, the Raiders are a very interesting opportunity. Yep. You get to play him twice a year. You've got a rock star wide receiver. If they don't bring Josh Jacobs back, they'll have one of those 12 available stud uh, running backs coming back. You've got an above average defense. You've got the belief now in Antonio Pierce as your head coach. And there's a big part of me that would say, look, the Steelers are a better option. I can't deny that. Yeah. But I have a chance to rub Sean Payton's nose in my success. I'm your huckleberry. Don't sleep on the Vegas Raiders. Yeah, yeah. for me, I, I agree. I, I think that what's interesting that when you talk about Russ is his makeup. I don't think he has the venom like we talk about to right. go kind of be combative against Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos. I do see him landing in Pittsburgh because I think when Pittsburgh drafted Kenny Pickett, there was, a, there was this notion that it was going to be a reach, right? Because he played at the University of Pittsburgh, and he was right next door, and he was a kid they was familiar with. At the end of the day, I think what happened this year – was that they, Kenny Pickett got exposed in year two. He sure. wasn't the guy that they thought he was going to be. And the only time, the one game he had it was that was a, a kind of a, a, a bleep in the, in the radar was when they fired uh, Matt Canada. He had a great game against Cincinnati. It was like, oh, maybe so it was but Canada. Also, don't fault. forget one thing about Kenny Pickett. And he's a proud guy, so I respect yeah, that, yeah, right? right? He's right. a competitor like you guys are. So I totally respect the fact that he's pissed as well. But there was a game when he was healthy enough to come back from the injury. Yes. And they made a decision that even though he was hand. good to go, right. that Mason Rudolph was going to start a game in December. And the story in Pittsburgh, I'm assuming it's accurate, I don't know for a fact, is that Kenny Pickett said, if I'm not starting, I'm not dressing. Yeah. And that that was an issue with the coaching staff there. Now, I'm not sure how much that is accurate. He denied it Or what the words are. He obviously denied it afterwards. But if you're Mike Tomlin, and you're going into your first ever lame duck season contractually as the head coach of the Steelers, and you gave some thought this offseason to retiring or taking a year off before maybe resuming yeah. your coaching career elsewhere, and you have a chance to upgrade the most important position on the field, how could he not reach out to Russell Wilson? Yes. And I don't care what Kenny Pickett thinks. Yeah. I'm trying to win. Right. Steelers are known for growing with, from within. They believe in letting guys mature. But overall, you also got to understand that some of the headlines that are coming out, like Mr. Rooney, the head boss, the, yep. the head guy, he understands, like, listen, we've been good enough but not great. The standard has lowered, right? And you heard James Harrison come out and say, listen, at the end of the day, the standard right now is not having to lose a season. When we played, it was about winning Super Bowls. Yeah. That was it. So now that you recognize that and that's become the theme of your team, one thing to kind of get over that is getting Russell Wilson. And don't forget what, what the Rooney said this past offseason. Yo, know, being over 500 is great. It ain't enough. Not at all. We got to start winning some playoff games. Yep. So he didn't say it's Super Bowl or bust because that would be a silly thing to say. Right. But he did say, we have to win postseason games. But as you also mentioned, Craig, look at the division. 
It's not getting easier. Deshaun Watson, you got to oh, believe it's the best is going to be better. Football. Defense. Oh, they talking about the Bengals and Joe Burrows and what they're going to be able to do. Yeah. You talk about the Baltimore Ravens and what they look like last year. So he's like, listen, as much as we want to get this team to be on par, we got to keep up with the rest of the division and how they're playing. Well, if we have decided that the Raiders and the Steelers are his two sort of best decisions, and we decide that here at this table, you have to understand you're going to be in the same division as Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, yeah. and Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. So either way, but you feel better with at least Russ walking onto the field as your quarterback than Kenny picking or what he looked oh, like yeah. last year. Yeah, and remember. Remember, you know, all due respect to the greatness of the Kansas City Chiefs and Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, they have a mini dynasty going. They are the team everyone's got to beat. Everyone's chasing them. And you got the best football player in the world in Patrick Mahomes, and he equalizes any deficiency that the Kansas City Chiefs have. They were not dominant this They're year. Beat the Broncos beat them this year. The Raiders beat them this year. They didn't have home field advantage mm-hmm. this year. The wide receiving market's drying up. Calvin Ridley and Gabe Davis, for my money, are the two best available guys. Maybe they draft a wide receiver. Who knows? But the, the, the gap between Kansas City, and let's just start with their division, and the rest of the, the AFC West used to be this and now it's this oh, correct. because they got beaten by those teams. Now, I think Denver, you know, is in the ocean without a paddle because they don't have a quarterback now, right? You got uh, Danucci Instead and of, Stidham. Yep. So they got to go find a veteran quarterback who can play in the Sean Payton system, but they're not afraid of Kansas City anymore. No, they, they finished 8-9, correct? The Raiders sure as hell ain't afraid of Kansas City no. with Antonio Pierce as their coach. They beat him this year. So it's interesting. If you get a Russell Wilson – Whatever that gap was, it closes even more. Moving on to our third and final headline that involves the Dallas Cowboys. Remember their curious loss to the Packers at home in the playoffs. There were some questions about the culture with the Cowboys. Dak Prescott was asked about the culture, and here is what he had to say. My point is, yeah, that's something I've always bragged on and took pride in. So if there's questions of that, concerns in that, um, I feel attacked. Uh, I'm sure some guys in the locker room do, um, but at the end of the day, uh, it's a business, and and the way that this this business plays out, people don't get exactly what they wanted. There's always there's always sourness, I guess you can say somewhere. So he was asked a question, but do you think there's actual cultural problems with the Cowboys? I think there's ownership problems with the Dallas Cowboys. I think Jerry Jones is now a problem. I thought Jerry Jones for the first 40 years of his stewardship as the owner of the Dallas Cowboys was the difference maker in a positive way. That he'd be the guy that would go out there and whoever I could get that's going to help my team, I'm going to be first in line to get them. I don't care the cost. I own the Dallas Cowboys. Everything's bigger in Dallas, right? Or in Texas, right? And now all of a sudden, there's a lot of lip service being paid to doing this and doing that, and there's no payoff to it. Uh, look, he's put together a good team, no doubt about that. There's talent in Dallas. Let's not yeah. get it twisted like he's an incompetent owner. He's not. Uh, but it's been 30 years. And for 30 years, you've been selling me on the fact that you're the right guy to make every personnel decision. You're the right guy to bring the Dallas Cowboys back to their glory days. Well, 30 years have gone by, you haven't done it. Mm-hmm. And now you're playing footsies with Micah Parsons on his fifth-year option, which is just stupid because he's never going to play under the fifth-year option. So why go through the machinations of, you know, labeling him an end instead of a linebacker because you'd save three million bucks two years from now in a deal that he's never going to play under. So that doesn't make any sense. Uh, there are available free agents. Chris Jones is one of them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Xavier McKinney now. Is another one yep. from the New York Giants, a great safety who's now available. Saquon Barkley, who uh, obviously was a disappointment as a Giant, but is one of the best available running backs now. The Dallas Cowboys have a chance to prove to their fan base, the biggest fan base in all sports, that the owner hasn't lost his fastball. I'm afraid that he has. Because we can talk all the smack we want to about how great I am at what I do and how I put a great product on the field and I'm going to bring this team back you know, to Super Bowl appearances. But the proof is in the pudding. And you haven't done it. And we learned a valuable lesson about Dallas again last year. They are nowhere near as good as the San Francisco 49ers. So while they might be good enough, <coughs> to win the NFC East again, although no team has repeated in 20 years as champions of the NFC East. As a fan, I don't believe in him anymore because what's the guy done to get me over the hump? The answer, unfortunately, is nothing. 
Yeah, yeah, correct, especially when you talk about being all in and now saying we go as far as Dak goes. Dak hasn't brought you anywhere, you know, outside of getting bumped in the playoffs. Now you're talking about potentially at the end of next year, get a new head coach and figuring out how you, who's going to be the next heir apparent if Mike McCarthy doesn't deliver you a Super Bowl. Look, the, the owner of the team should never be the lead story every single week. Never. There's not a single winning franchise in any sport where the owner's the star. And there's great owners out there, right? Like, can you, most people, if I said to you, I'll use your Miami Heat, culture of winning. Who owns the Miami Heat? Now, we know who it is. Yeah. The American public doesn't know who no. it is because you have a face of the organization who commands great respect and makes great decisions in Pat Riley. Right. Right? Take a look at the Kansas City Chiefs. The biggest thing you hear from Clark Hunt, the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, is what? He didn't live up to his promise right. of improving the locker room right. for the Kansas City Chiefs, yeah. and he lied to the guys. Right. But do you know who the GM is? You bet your ass you do. Yeah. So the recipe for success and continued success is putting the right people, professionals, in positions of power and letting them do their job. Dallas has never done that, which is why the streak goes on without the Dallas Cowboys being in a Super Bowl. Correct. Timmy, always great seeing you, buddy. Timmy!